Wishio is an average looking guy who goes to high school, likes drawing, and wants to be a painter, and I hope he gets admission in an art school, because I can't sit through another world war. He however descends from the bloodline of the ancient order of elite samurais who used to fight against the evil of the world. According to the legends that his father, who is a lecturer at the temple, told him, 500 years ago, this earth was on the brink of getting destroyed because of a legendary monster that was on the rise and was killing everyone that came in his sight. Everyone was scared of him and ran away from the villages as soon as they heard that this monster was even remotely nearby. One of his ancestors, however, a strong samurai, used a spear, which was created in China specially for the purpose of slaying monsters, to impale this giant monster to the wall, successfully stopping the monster. But in the process, he ended up dying. Bushio has listened to this story countless times and is pretty much done with this story about a legendary monster, a legendary spear, and a legendary samurai. None of them exist today, and there is no evidence for any spears or monsters. Even this morning, he has a small tussle with his father, in which this absolute unit of a man ended up kicking his own father in the jaw. Later on, Mushio tells his dad to shut the hell up or show him the legendary spear that he keeps talking about. They again start fighting about this until his father gets up and starts packing his stuff. Mushio asks whether he is leaving for good, but his father tells him that he is just going on a vacation for seven days to Netflix and chill and be away from his irritating face. Wow, they seem to be more toxic than my ex. They should probably drink some water. Bushio's father tells him to dust the books in the shed and show them some light before going and Ushio tells him to piss off before closing the door. Later that day, he decides to fulfill his father's wishes and goes inside of the shed to dust the books. But while carrying the giant load of books, his legs get stuck in something and he falls over. He gets up to examine the ground and is surprised to see a trapdoor right beneath him that he has never seen before because it was covered by a carpet. He grabs the handles and tries to open the door, but the door seems to be very thick and heavy, just like the woman next door. This muscle head decides to use brute strength and literally rips the bolts of the door apart somehow, but is unable to handle the weight of the door and falls inside. He gets up and cleans the dust off of him, when suddenly he feels a very eerie presence behind him. He turns around slowly just to see a giant yellow-colored monster sitting near the wall. This scares the crap out of him, and then to put the icing on the top, the monster is alive as it starts talking. He asks why Ushio is staring at him, as it is creepy even for the monster. Then the monster suddenly tells Ushio that it is good that he came down, as he is currently impaled by this Dan's spear, and only a human can pull it out of him. The monster tells him that he has been trying to get himself out of this situation from the past 500 years, but no matter what he does, he cannot seem to get rid of the Dan's spear. He tells Ushio again to remove the spear, but Ushio asks him what he will do if he does. The monster looks him in the eye, and tells him that first he will devour Ushio, and then he will kill the rest of the people living around, and once again create this world a living hell. Ushio starts kicking the spear more inside of the monster, and the monster starts crying out of pain, as he doesn't realize why Ushio doesn't want to let him loose from the spear. The monster then tries to attack Ushio, and is able to reach him with his nails, cutting him above the forehead, but Ushio is a Jigachad, and just keeps pushing the spear even more inside of him. He then gets up and starts going up the stairs, but the monster gets scared of losing his chance to escape, and starts calling him and saying that he didn't mean what he said, and that he just got carried away by the thought of freedom. He tells Ushio that if he pulls the spear out of him, he will do whatever he says, and he will keep this promise as he is scared of humans. Ushio, however, looks at him and tells him that he will not let a monster like him lose in this world ever, and walks outside and proceeds to board the entire trapdoor up while the monster cries out to him to not do it. Ushio then proceeds to go to school as if nothing had happened. The balls on this man must be made up of steel. He meets up with two of his classmates named Ino and Naka, who both seem to like Ushio. Ino is the bubbly loving type, whereas Naka is the classic Sundere. Ino comments that Ushio seems to be lost in his own thoughts and asks him whether he was okay, even Naka comments that it is not like Ushio to think about anything ever before she asks him whether he brought the book that he borrowed from her several days back and Ushio says he hasn't. Naka tells him that she will be coming after school to his place so he better keep the book ready, and they all go inside their classes. Even in class, Ushio can't help but think about the monster in his basement and starts drawing a picture of it before he is invited to play soccer. He has amazing reflexes and is able to win the game very easily for his team before he decides to go back to his place. In the afternoon, Nakata alongside Ino visits his house to get the book back, but as soon as Bushio opens the door, he spots some weird transparent flying thingies that look like the floaters that you see sometimes in your eyes. He gets freaked out by them and not going to lie, the first time I saw floaters in my eye I was scared as well. 
He tries to get rid of them. But to the girls, it looks like Wushu has gone insane. And to bring him back to reality, Naka kicks him in the face. Excellent job, woman, now he has amnesia as well. Bushio gets up and runs towards the shed, where he starts taking the wooden planks apart and shouts at the monster, asking him what he did to his eyes as he is seeing illusions. The monster laughs at him and tells him that when Ushio opened the trapdoor, 500 years worth of demonic energy was released in the outside world, which attracted lesser demons and he can probably see them earlier only because he saw him inside of the shed. The monster tells him that the lesser demons will materialize soon and start killing humans left and right. He then tells Ushio that it is all his fault that his precious little friends will die and he cannot do anything about it, but the monster promises that if he frees him, he will not kill Ushio or his friends and will get rid of every single lesser demon in the area. Not having a choice, Ushio goes down and grabs the spear with both hands. He then starts pulling the spear, and after some effort, the spear gets free of the monster's body. The monster is impressed by Ushio's pull-out game, but decides to attack him anyways. Bushio is thrown against the wall and he starts bleeding. He looks at the monster and asks him why would he do that and the monster laughs in his face and tells him that he must be dumber than a cupboard to think that he will keep his promise to a weak little human. Bushio can't believe himself and thinks about the girls in trouble. Before he starts getting angry, an unholy aura starts generating around him. His hair also starts growing, which scares the living out of him. He curses himself for not noticing that the boy still had the legendary spear, and looks in horror as Ushio starts looking more and more like the samurai who impaled him in the first place. Lucio is still pursuing the monster even though he freaks out and runs outside, killing every lesser demon in his path. The monster runs and suddenly becomes Pikachu, shocking every demon around him to a crisp and saying sorry to Ushio and promising that he will kill every demon. Lucio looks towards the house and notices that the demons have congregated and became one huge entity. He tells the monster to go and attack the greater demon first, and that he will finish it off soon after. The monster listens to Ushio without a word and jumps in the sky using his claws to tear through the demon before Ushio jumps and shreds the demon to pieces with the help of the spear. He lands down and his hair starts falling off and the monster tells him that he kept his promise and killed the lesser demons and starts to walk away, but Ushio stops his path and tells him that more demons are around, and until they have killed every single demon, he is going to stay with him. He names the monster Tora and starts walking towards his house with him, thinking that a day will come soon when he will impale the monster and seal him again. The following day, Wushio wakes up to the loud sound of Tora breaking his TV as he thought the samurai inside of it was coming to kill him. Wushio goes to school alongside Tora, who is sitting on his shoulder and is invisible to the rest of the students. Wushio is forced to carry his spear with him, as he needs the spear to draw out his powers in case Tora decides to rebel. He meets up with Ino, and Naka inside of the school who claim that they both had the same scary dream last night about a bunch of monsters trying to kill him. Ushio just smiles, glad that they don't know what happened in reality. He asks them about where they were headed to, and they reply that they are going inside of the old school building to shift some books, as they want to renovate it. Ushio reminds her that the class begins soon, and she replies that she will be back before that. Ushio goes inside of the class, but some time passes by, and the girls still haven't returned. The teacher has already started teaching about Japanese history, and out of everyone in the class, Tora seems to be the most interested in knowing what happened in the last 500 years and is even taking notes. Suddenly, the ground shakes, and a very shrill noise is being emitted by Ushio's spear that apparently only he can hear. He gets scared for the girls and immediately grabs his spear and rushes outside of the class. The teacher tries to stop him, but he keeps running, and on the staircase, he is shocked to see one of the girls that went with Naka and Ino half turned into stone, asking for help and crying. Ushio screams at the teacher to help the girl and rushes outside. The news spreads like wildfire and a bunch of media and police arrive in front of the old school building, presuming it to be a case of kidnapping. They enter inside the school but are unable to find anything. And they come out once again, confused, as to where did the girls go. Ushio asks Toro what is this all about, and he starts laughing, saying he can't believe Ushio didn't feel the presence of the giant rock monster residing in the old building, and didn't even see the barrier that made him invisible. Ushio grabs his hair and tells him to give more information, but Tora snaps back and scratches him on his hand, claiming that he will give him no more information. He tells Ushio that the humans don't mean anything to him, and he will devour them if it comes to it. Ushio gets mad and takes out his spear, and attacks Tora. Tora dodges and strikes back, but Bushio is able to dodge his claws and hits him in the face before impaling his hand to the ground a little bit. Tora starts crying out in pain and tells him to take it out. 
Ushio removes the spear and Tora tells him that he is pretty sure the culprit here is a rock eater, who lives inside of dark and musty places and waits for humans to enter his area so that it can devour them. He also claims that rock eaters are dangerous, and once he saw a rock eater turn an entire group of armored samurais into stone. Hushio had enough of the conversation and decides that he needs to act now. He rushes through the police who try to stop him and enters the old building where he slashes at the invisible barrier, and it immediately breaks, revealing a giant rock samurai. The samurai attacks Ushio, but he blocks it and jumps behind him, stabbing him in the chest, thinking that he killed him, but Tora starts laughing and tells him that the samurai is just a pupper, and it's not the actual monster. Suddenly, a tentacle arises from the samurai's eye and stabs Ushio, who loses his spear and turns back to normal. He tries to get to the spear, but two more tentacles arise from the samurai and they bang him against the ceiling. The barrier starts closing and Tora decides to hop through the other side before telling Ushio that if he is unable to run before the barrier closes, he will die an agonizing death. Ushio looks back at Tora and asks him to help. Tora tells him not to order him to help him as he is done with him, but to his surprise, Ushio tells him to save the girls and run away. Tora looks at him in disbelief and asks him whether he has gone crazy. Why would he want to save the lives of other humans, especially when he himself is in danger, but Ushio stands his ground and pleads with Tora to save the girls. Tora ends up giving in and rushes to carry all of the girls outside the barrier, and he looks back at Ushio. Ushio takes one last look at him, thanks him for saving the girls and apologizes that he didn't get to devour him. Tora has had enough, and he jumps in between he barrier and stops it from closing while Tora is still turning to stone. The Rock Eater is shocked to see a monster taking a human side, and uses a bunch of his tentacles to stab Tora as well, who can't do anything because he is stopping the barrier. Ushio wishes very hard for the spear to come to him, and surprisingly, the spear flies towards him and stabs him in the stomach, where the rock formation has been completed. Suddenly, he stops changing into a stone, and then the spear rushes towards Tora who gets scared, but the spear just lodges itself in the barrier, letting Tora leave. Tora gets out from between the wall and walks towards the rock eater and Pikachu's the crap out of him. There is a huge explosion and both Lushio and Tora launch themselves in the sky. The samurai crumbles to pieces and the actual monster appears in the form of two centipede heads. Tora tells him that this is the real monster and Ushio has to use his spit on their eyes to weaken and kill them. Ushio starts falling towards the centipedes and he spits on his spear, which is kinky to say the least before stabbing it in the centipede's eyes one by one, killing the monster in an instant. He then quickly slashes at the girls who were turned to stone, which releases them from the curse before running away with Tora in the sunset. That night, Tora and Ushio are on TV, which delights Tora as he can't get enough of it, while Ushio tries to sleep. Ushio's father has finally returned from the trip, and once again he starts lecturing Ushio in the morning about their history, without knowing that the damn monster that he is talking about is literally behind him. His dad once again tells him never to try and go under the shed, and Ushio quickly changes the topic and gets up to leave for school. His dad looks at the giant spear that he is carrying and uneasily laughs about how it looks like the legendary spear, but it obviously cannot be. Ushio laughs with him saying that it obviously isn't before briskly walking out of the house. His dad follows him and looks with his jaw dropped that the trapdoor has been completely destroyed. Later that day, Ushio alongside the girls and Tora visit the art gallery, where Ushio seems to be very excited and happy, looking at all these pictures. Tora cannot really understand his excitement over paint splattered on paper, but he still sits on his shoulder and goes alongside him. They finally come to a picture, which Ushio describes as the masterpiece of the great artist Hanyu, who died after creating this picture. The girls ask why this is just the photograph of the actual painting and Ushio replies that the real painting belongs to his daughter Reiko. Maka looks at the picture more closely before saying that she seems to have seen this girl before, but quickly changes her mind saying that she might be mistaken and walks off. Tora, however, stares at the picture for some time before realizing that the person who painted this is a human demon, and this painting is cursed. The following day, as Ushio is walking to school, a senior at his school trips him and begins punching him for no apparent reason. Tora laughs and watches the fight from a distance. Suddenly, a girl walks up from behind him and tells him to let go of him, and the senior left him alone and moved. Everyone started talking among themselves, and the girl simply moved away. Ushio immediately recognized the girl as Reiko, from the painting, and calls after her. She turns around and tells him that she didn't do it for him or anything, so don't get any thoughts. Ushio, however, keeps pressing and asks her whether she is Reiko, the daughter of the famous painter Hanyu, and she replies that she is. He rushes after her and asks her to model for her, 
but she refuses outright, telling him to get away from her otherwise bad things will happen to him. She turns around the corner and he still pursues her. But as soon as he turns around the corner, a speeding truck comes through, hitting Tora but Ushio was able to grab his spear and transform just in time to split the truck at two, and saves his own life. Reiko disappears from there and Ushio also goes back to his house but later goes over Naka's place and asks her about Reiko. She seems to be defensive at first, thinking that he likes her, but he tells her that he only wants her to model for a painting and nothing else, as it was his dream to draw her as one of his French girls. Naka starts telling him about Reiko and reveals that she was a transfer student last year in their school and the boys were immediately smitten by her beauty, but she always kept to herself and never talked to anyone. Naka, however, wanted her to have friends and started talking to her, and slowly she started opening up. They become friends but once a guy from her class asked her out and suddenly that very day he died because a bunch of bricks fell on him, crushing him to death. That very day, Reiko tried to off herself inside of her own tub, but thankfully she was found by the authorities before late and they saved her. After that, she was never the same. She stopped talking to anyone at all, and once when Naka tries to force her to talk, she pushed her away. She tells her that she needs to stay away from her, as if she doesn't, bad things will happen to her. Just then, sharp objects fall out of Sky's ass for no reason, but Reiko jumps on Naka and protects her from dying by getting stabbed. She then told her to stay away from her as she doesn't want her to get hurt because of her. That day, when he was walking back to his place, he is again stopped by the senior, who grabs him and asks him why he is nosing around Reiko, and punches him in the face which delights Tora, who starts enjoying the show as both the senior and Oshio fight with each other. Finally, Ushio the idiot stops the senior's punch with his head, as he does an any brain inside anyways and tells the senior that he knows that the senior is aware of Reiko's problem, before punching the senior to the ground. They then lay down on the ground next to each other, and start talking. The senior reveals that when they were young, he and Reiko were best friends and practically inseparable. Then one day, her mother eloped with one of her dad's art students and everything changed. The next time he saw her dad, he was frantically and demonically working on the painting of Reiko, and it looked like he was possessed. The very next day, he died, and ever since, he's been haunting Reiko, and not letting poor Reiko live her life as he is scared that a guy will take her away from him. Bushio decides that he will not back off this easily, and next day, during the folk dance, he is able to convince Reiko to dance with him, and she reluctantly agrees but slowly starts liking being normal, but suddenly, a dust devil erupts and covers both of them inside of it. Suddenly, Wushio is hit from behind and a huge gash erupts on his back, and he starts bleeding. Suddenly, a demon comes out of the dust devil, and tells Ushio to piss off as Reiko only belongs to daddy. Okay weirdo. He tries hitting Ushio again, but this time Tora comes through, and stops the demon, telling him that no half-demon touches his human and shocks him away. The senior rushes towards Ushio and helps him up, and by the time they look around they realize that Reiko has disappeared. They both rush towards her house and are horrified to see her on top of her house, as she jumps off the roof, telling her dad that she is coming to him. Wishio quickly throws his spear into the wall, and she gets stuck on the spear a bit, while he and the senior run to the first floor, and together, they are able to grab it. To their absolute horror, the demon is standing below, calling Reiko to him, saying that she belonged to daddy, and daddy alone. Okay, weirdo. Wishio screams at her to not listen to him. He tells her that she is not alone, that people care for her. He tells her that she should chose the living over the dead, and something resonates with her, and she grabs their hand, and they all are able to pull her inside. The demon is distraught at her daughter for betraying her just like her mother did, and grabs both Reiko and the senior, and starts taking them back inside of the painting. Bushio quickly grabs his spear and launches himself at the demon and starts to stab it, but his spear has no effect on it. Tora laughs at him and tells him that he is already in the picture world, and there he cannot kill the demon. The demon grabs Oshio as well, and starts sucking him in as well. Tora laughs at Oshio, and tells him to beg him for his help. Only then he will help him. But surprisingly, Oshio doesn't say anything, and gets sucked in by the painting. This pisses Tora off, and he launches himself on the painting and grabs Oshio's head, telling him that only he gets to devour him, but the painting is not letting go. So Tora goes inside the painting and bitch slaps the demon, and takes all of them out, before telling Oshio to stab the painting. Ushio grabs his spear, and stabs the painting, but at the last moment, this stupid thought Reiko gets in the middle, and gets stabbed alongside the painting, horrifying both Ushio and the senior, but it turns out that the spear has no effect on her, as she simply slips off and the painting behind her gets destroyed. Tora claims that the spear is only effective on demons, and does not harm humans. They all see that a golden projection of Reiko's dad erupts from the painting, 
and it bows in front of them before telling Reiko to live her life to the fullest and disappearing. Tor has adapted to living with Ushio, even though he still sometimes try to find places where Ushio doesn't take his spear with him, so that Tora can attack, but even when he tried attacking him in the bathroom, Ushio beat him up, as he even carried the spear inside. Ushio walks to the living room and discovers a letter by his dad, which told him not to look for him. What a drama queen. He then turns on the TV and sees an emergency announcement, telling people that one of the areas in Tokyo is unsafe to go because there might be some big wild animal nearby. According to the report, a bunch of construction workers who were trying to excavate a giant landmark were killed by an unknown animal, as there were a bunch of huge bite marks all over their bodies. The thing that is puzzling to them is that whatever animal it was, it even bit through the metal of the cranes. Ushio immediately is filled with unreal rage as he thinks that it must be the work of Tora, as he is the one who looks like an animal and can definitely chew through metal. He shouts Tora's name, who is sitting on his roof. He comes down and asks Ushio why he was making such a racket, but is surprised to see Ushio already transformed and angry. He asks him what is the matter, but Ushio straight up accuses him of killing the people in the city and attacks him. Tora dodges and screams that he has no idea what Ushio is talking about, but Ushio simply smacks the spear on his head with a lot of force, hurting him. Tora gets incredibly angry and backs off before trying to Pikachu the crap out of Ushio. Ushio, however, is able to absorb all of the lightning with the help of his spear, and Tora realizes that currently Ushio is stronger than him and jumps up in the sky before flying away, telling Ushio that he never ate any humans for the past 500 years, but now that Ushio has already accused him for something that he never did. Ushio calls after him, but Tora flies away, totally planning to eat humans just to spite Ushio. He goes into the city and is totally shocked to see so many weird things that he has never seen before. He is shocked to see the huge buildings and the cars rolling around on the road and doesn't have any idea what he should make of them. He is also shocked to see how many humans are walking on the road, but thinks that it would just make his job easier. He tries walking on the road, but is instantly hit by a truck and gets stuck into the wall. This angers him and he starts screaming at the cars driving by, but obviously no one can see him, so he just uses his lightning attack and destroys the battery of every single car nearby, happy with his little revenge. Meanwhile, Wushia runs towards the city, horrified at the thought that he has just let loose a monster, who eats human inside of the city. He was walking past a street, when he sees a bunch of people standing around a crime scene, and he goes over to have a look at it. The police are all telling people to stay back, but one old man keeps telling the policeman that this is not some animal's doing, in fact, it is the result of demons who got released the last night. The police keep trying to push the old man back, but he pulls out a book and shoves it in their faces, telling them that this is his grandfather's journal, and it is clearly written that it was a site where demons were sealed away. The policeman has had enough and he pushes the old man back or stumbles, but Ushio catches him, commenting about the rude policeman. He asks the old man whether he was fine and picks his book for him, but suddenly stops as he looks at the picture of a beautiful older woman on it. He asks the old man about her, and they go to a bench to talk. The old man explains that this journal belongs to his grandfather, and when he was a child, there were demons lurking around in the forest, who used to devour anyone who came nearby. The villagers called everyone they can think of, samurais and warriors and even exorcists, but they never returned back alive. The villagers finally decided that they cannot stay here anymore, as every other day someone from the village would get eaten by the demons. One day, however, a beautiful young woman entered their village who introduces herself as Mikado. She told the villagers to give her one chance and promised them to get rid of the demons. She entered the forest alone that the old man's grandfather was a young boy who was full of hormones and couldn't help himself but go after the older woman who went inside the forest alone, risking his own life as well. When he reached the forest, he was shocked to see that the lady was standing in front of a bunch of monsters, and forcing them back inside the boxes by using some special enchantment. The demons were screaming at her and vowing revenge, but she ended up closing them in separate boxes before using a large landmark to bury them. She then looked around and spotted the kid and walked up to him, telling him that she might not be around the next time they get released, so he should make sure that no one ever moves the keystone, otherwise the demons will be released and wreak havoc in this world. He quickly made sure to let the entire village know and even created a journal to make sure that people of the next generation know this as well. Bushio is speechless and looks at the old man as he tells him that last night the keystone was removed by the excavators and the demons have been released and now they will not stop till they have had their revenge on the person that captured them, Mikado. Bushio suddenly takes a closer look at the picture and realizes that the woman in the picture has an uncanny resemblance to Ino, it is most probably her ancestor. The old man says that if it is so, then she is in grave danger as the demons will definitely go after her. 
Bushio begs the man to help him, he gets his car, and drives him to the city. On the other end, Tora is doing a very bad job navigating around this modern world, as he keeps hitting glass walls everywhere, and he is unable to cope with the stench of modern perfume and can't eat other people, because everyone has something or the other on their body that is indigestible to Tora, such as a metal bracelet, ring, or earrings. He sulks around the entire city, thinking that he will never be able to eat a human ever again, when suddenly, he goes past Inno. He doesn't recognize her, but immediately stops and looks at her soft body. He realizes that she smells nice and doesn't have any earrings or piercings on her. He is very excited as soon as he realizes that he can eat her. He prepares to jump on her, but suddenly stops because he realizes that there are other monsters around this place that are not him. He looks behind and spots a bunch of weird-looking floating heads flying towards her. They take one look at her and immediately attack her, even before Tora has the time to react. Thankfully, however, Wishio arrives just in time and throws his spear at the heads, who quickly move away. He then screams at Ino to make a run for it, but she is too dazed and confused to do anything. One of the heads tries attacking her again, but Ushio simply calls his spear back, forcing the head to move away from that position. Ino quickly runs inside of the mall, while Ushio stands in front to defend her. The heads try to chase her, but Ushio simply swings his spear at them. To his surprise, however, one of the heads simply grabs his spear in between his teeth, and one of the heads uses its long hair to bind Ushio, while two more run up to him and start biting him and try to kill him. Ushio, however, is made of tough steel, and the heads are unable to kill him, so they simply toss him away at a car, injuring him before going after Inno again. Tor gets angry at the heads as Inno is his prey and tries to go after them, only to hit another glass window, which enrages him, and he stops being invisible, breaking the window and getting inside of the mall. He tries to find her, but suddenly spots are falling out of the higher floor, which was destroyed by the heads. He quickly goes out and sees that thankfully, she got stuck on an iron bar and is still alive. She keeps slipping, however, and starts falling towards the head, who has his mouth already open, but Tora is incredible fast and grabs her before she could fall down. He takes her up on the roof of the building and tells her that she is her prey and only he will eat her. She is completely confused and her legs totally give away, making her collapse on the floor. Suddenly, the heads come up on the roof as well and ask Tora who he was. They tell them that Inno was their prey, and if he comes in between, they will devour him as well. Tora simply looks at them and smiles, telling them to try their best. One of the heads rushes towards him, but Tora simply grabs him and smashes him into the ground, killing him instantly. The other heads are shocked at Tora's incredible strength, but tell him that they will eat the girl no matter what, and one of the heads uses his hair to bind Tora before telling the others to go after the girl as he will take care of him. Inno starts running once again, while Tora is bound by one of the heads and the others run after Inno. The head that captured Tora looks at him and mocks him for thinking that he could take on all the heads on its own, but Tora merely laughs at him, saying that how could the heads be stupid enough to think that they ever had a chance against him? He breaks through the hair and jumps at the head, biting half of it in a single go, killing it instantly. The heads chase the girl and finally catch up to her, injuring her a bit, but Tora arrives just in time, flaunting the half-eaten head in his hand and telling them to back off and not to touch and dirty the girl up. The heads are horrified to see another of their family member dead at Tora's hands and rush to bite him. Tora simply stands there grimacing and gives an eerie smile, mocking their futile efforts, before he becomes Pikachu again and shocks the crap out of all of them, burning them to crisps and killing them in an instant. One of the heads who is still somehow alive tries to rush at Ino, so he can at least kill her and take his revenge. But before he could touch her, Wishio arrives and stabs him in the head, killing it in an instant. Tora gets incredibly sad because now he won't be able to eat the girl and tries to quickly run away, but Wishio stops him, and Tora immediately gets ready for a fight, but to his surprise, Wishio looks at him and apologizes for accusing him of killing the humans in the city. A huge smile erupts on Tora's face, and he starts trash-talking Ushio about how he is a numbskull, who acts before thinking and how his entire bloodline must be stupid. They start fighting again, but Ino stops their fight and gives Tora a burger, because she heard he was hungry. Tora is completely dumbfounded at this stupid girl, as he can't believe she just offered a human-eating demon a burger. Ushio suddenly wakes up in the middle of the night, sensing something coming from the spear. He gets up just in time to dodge Tora's attack. He yells at him about what the hell does he think he is doing, and Tora casually replies that he is doing what he is supposed to do, looking for an opportunity to devour him. Ushio gets mad and grabs his spear, to maybe lightly hit Tora on the head as he believes he must have reached some kind of compromise with him, but Tora immediately dodges his attack and slashes in his face, clawing half of his face with deep gouges of his claws. 
Wuxiao is completely blown away as he never suspected Tora will actually hurt him so easily, after all they have been through. Tora laughs at him and tells him that he only has hatred for Ushio in his heart, and no matter what he does, he will always have to keep an eye out for him as Tora will always try to find opportunities to kill him. He tries to attack him again, but the spear automatically starts defending Ushio. As he gets up angrily, grabbing the spear and transforming, ready to fight Tora. Tor, however, quickly jumps out of the window and flies away, while Ushio is left fuming with anger. Ushio looks at himself in the morning and realizes that the claw marks still haven't gone away because he was in his human form when Tora attacked. He gets even more mad and vows that he will kill Tora the next moment he sees him, as a monster will always be a monster. Ushio goes outside for a walk when he overhears a bunch of noise and notices a guy in black beating the crap out of two punks who are bullying a family. The man in black, however, takes out his kumines and throws it at them with the intent to kill the punks. Ushio, however, quickly jumps in between and blocks the kumines with his spear, asking the man whether he has lost his mind as these men will die if he does that. The man looks at Ushio and he sees the shadow of a monster on him, which angers him, and he begins attacking him. Ushio dodges his attacks but gets caught up in a rope. Thankfully, he is able to stabilize himself, but not long after, the man is able to trip him down and steps on top of him, ready to kill him when the spear automatically hurls itself towards the man, injuring him. The man immediately recognizes the beast's spear and calms down. He picks Ushio up and bows down to the ground immediately, saying that he was mistaken to attack a wielder of the beast's spear. Ushio tells him to get up as he has already forgiven him, and they start talking. The man introduces himself as Hugh, whence as a demon hunter, who roams around different places hunting for demons. He tells Bushio that he had a family, a wife, and a daughter, whom he loved more than anything in this world, but once he had to go out for a business trip, and when he returned back at his home and called out to his wife, no one replied. He got scared so he quickly opened the door and suddenly a demon, who looked like an animal, jumped out and clawed at his face, leaving the deep scars that he carries till day. He says that he got a picture from the TV of a similar looking demon that was spotted near an old school building, where a bunch of schoolgirls were kidnapped, and he shows Ushio a picture of Tora. Ushio realizes that the monster that the man is looking for is not Tora because Tora was sealed away for 500 years inside his basement and was released only a couple of weeks ago, so he can't possibly have killed the man's wife and kid. He was about to tell Hugh that the monster he is looking for isn't Tora, but stops in the middle and remembers how Tora attacked him in sleep. A wave of anger rushes inside him again, and he tells the man that the demon he is looking for is indeed Tora, and you should kill him as soon as possible. He tells the man every single weakness that Tora has and tells him that he will aid and provide him with any information needed. The man thanks him and tells Ushio that he will deal with the rest. Ushio leaves the place and goes back to his home while he finds where Tora is hiding and engages him in a deadly combat. Bushio goes to school after that, but seems to be very lost in his own mind and doesn't seem to be himself. Naka and Ino both notice it, but he just brushes it off before leaving the conversation altogether. After the school got over, he started walking back to his house, but notices that Naka has been following him all the way from school, but isn't approaching him or talking to him. He gets annoyed at this and turns towards her, asking what the hell does she think she is doing, but Naka the weirdo immediately runs towards him and smacks him on the head with her bag and tells Ushio to hit her back. She screams at him saying that something has been clearly bothering him, so he should just simply clean his brain up by punching Naka, and if he doesn't do that, she will keep hitting him. Seriously, what a weirdo. She tells him that he is not a person who thinks for very long, that he is someone who is very impulsive and takes rash decision, and you should not change who he is before running away. This is the single most stupid piece of advice that I have heard in a long time. Somehow, however, the advice resonates with Ushio, and he runs off to find where Tora and Hugh is. I guess only an idiot can understand another idiot. He finds Hugh and Tora inside of a park, where both seem to be extremely exhausted after fighting for quite some time, but clearly, Hugh has the upper hand as Tora seems to be completely drained of any energy and is lying on the floor. Just before Hugh was about to deliver the final blow, Wishio runs and stands in front of Tora, telling Hugh to stop. Hugh seems to be confused and asks what does he think he is doing, and finally, Oshio admits that he lied to him. He tells Hugh that Tora couldn't have killed his wife and daughter, because he was trapped in Ushio's basement for the past 500 years, and was only released recently when Ushio pulled his spear out of him. He tells Hugh to leave Tora alone, as he is not the person who is guilty of his family's murder. Hugh loses his mind and punches Ushio in the face, telling him that it can't possibly be true. He has traveled all around the globe to find this monster, and now he is saying that this isn't the one. Hugh tells Ushio that this has to be the one, and throws his kunes at Tora, 
but Ushio intercepts them in the middle with his spear. He tells Hugh that Tora is not the culprit, and then compares his scar to Hugh's scar, pointing out that Hugh's face has a three-clawed scar, whereas Ushio's face, which was slashed by Tora, has a four-clawed scar. Hugh again punches Ushio down and then starts punching him relentlessly in the face while he lies there helpless. Hugh gets up again and starts using a fire spell to set his cunnies ablaze to kill Tora, but once again, Ushio stands in the middle, refusing to give way. Hugh throws his cunnies regardless, thinking that Ushio will dodge at the last second, but he doesn't. The cunnies drive themselves deep into Ushio's body, and he launches himself forward and punches Hugh, telling him that if he kills Tora, it will be cold-blooded murder, and his dead daughter will be disappointed in him, before getting completely knocked out. When Ushio wakes up again, and finds himself on a bench, Hugh tells him that he has provided him first aid and his injuries should heal in time. He tells Vishio that he agrees that if he killed Tora, he would have been a murderer, and thanks him for stopping him. He then says that his search for his family's killer is still going on, and their paths might cross again. And if they do, he hopes they are on the same side, and then he leaves. That day, Vishio goes back to his house and sleeps without a worry. Tora looks at him and prepares to attack, but at the last moment, he changes his mind and decides to have a burger instead for now. The summer vacation has finally started and Oshio's dad has disappeared again to Netflix and chill somewhere. Now, Oshio himself has decided to go on a small summer trip to a beach, alongside Naka and Ino. He has decided to spend his time resting on the beach and playing in the water alongside two gorgeous girls. This man is max out Riz, I swear to God. Tora seems to be pretty happy to get out of that city life and spend some time in the sea, which hasn't changed in the past 500 years, unlike everything else. He decides to go for a leisurely job on the ocean surface and disappears from Oshio's vision, who gets worried about his disappearance. Suddenly, he notices that a kid is throwing sand all over their things, and this angers Oshio, who runs out of the water and rushes at the kid before grabbing him by the neck. Naka runs after him and tells him to leave the kid alone as he didn't do any harm. Oshio listens to her, but as soon as he leaves, the little shit uses his water pistol to give Naka a golden shower before running away. They go back inside of a house where Naka's relatives live to have some snacks and the old uncle tells them that the kid is named Tatsu, who used to be a nice little kid, but recently his mom went to get milk and never came back following the footsteps of his dad, which ruined his childhood and ever since then he has been acting out being violent and just a big pain in the butt for everyone around. Wushio again wonders where Tora is who wants to become Jesus and starts running on the water before he suddenly stops when he feels a sudden disturbance beneath the ocean floor. A mysterious voice asks him whether he is Tora, the ancient king of demons, who has been missing for the past 500 years. And Tora tells him to show himself before he Pikachu's the water. The voice pleads with him to stop and reveals himself as an old man, telling him that he wants his help in dealing with an insanely strong underwater demon, who has been harassing everyone who comes nearby and feeds on demons and humans alike. Tora doesn't really care about anything else, but when the old demon man tells him that the demon is very strong, this excites Tora who agrees to fight the demon for him. Suddenly, a huge snake-like monster erupts from the sea, and even Tora is shocked by how big the snake is. He should see how big my snake is, and then he will get even more shocked. Tora tries to Pikachu the snake, but it is all in vain, as the snake is slathered in oil, just like I slather my snake in oil sometimes. The snake tries to hit Tora with its tail and Tora dodges, but to his surprise, the snake is extremely agile for its size and appears behind Tora before trying to eat him. Tora immediately lodges himself between his jaws and tries to stop the monster from closing its mouth, but fails as the snake decides to swallow him whole. At the last moment, however, the old spirit comes and grabs Tora, stopping the monster from closing its jaws, and Tora screams at him to find Oshio and bring him here as he has the beast spear, which can kill this monster. The old spirit refuses to leave Tora, so he is forced to Pikachu the spirit out of the monster's mouth and tells him to bring Ushio as soon as possible. Ushio, on the other hand, is walking around the beach again, when he spotted the little shit roaming around and putting sand in people's bags again. This time, Ushio runs up to him and gives him a good smack on the head, which he definitely deserves. Naka, however, stops him yet again and tells him that the kid is just a child and he will be fine and runs after the kid who was running away crying. Some time passes as Yushio is laying down on the beach when he suddenly senses that something is wrong. He runs past the beach when he starts hearing a mysterious voice coming from a beach shower. He stops nearby when the old spirit emerges from it and tells him that Tora is in trouble inside of the beast and is requesting assistance from it. Before he can reply, however, Inu runs up to him and tells him that Naka is in trouble. He runs back to the house where the old uncle is talking to Naka on the phone. 
Oshio grabs the phone from the old man and asks Naka what's wrong, who tells him that she was out on a boat with a little shithead, when suddenly, a giant snake monster swallowed both of them, and she is currently inside of the beast. Lucio tells her to stay calm as he is coming and rushes outside with his spear. He grabs a motor boat as the old spirit guides him deep into the sea, where he spots the giant snake. He picks up his spear and launches an attack on the snake, but his spear cannot pierce through the oiled up, elastic body of the monster and he bounces back. He tries stabbing it again and again, but all in vain. He uses another slash, which hurts the monster, and it throws Ushio up in the air before swallowing it whole as well. He rushes inside the body of the snake and spots Tora, holding on to both Naka and the kid, while trying not to get eaten by another set of jaws. He stops right in front of Tora, who saved both Naka and the boy from being eaten by the beast. He thanks him for saving them, but Tora's grip loosens, and he starts to fall. Thankfully, Ushio lodges his spear inside of the beast and holds on to all of them, but Naka has lost consciousness, and is about to slip away. Thankfully, Wushio was able to convince the little shit to grab Naka's hand to prevent her from falling. A problem appears, however, when Ushio loses grip of the spear and starts falling into the jaws of the beast, suddenly, the spear gets a life of its own and whizzes past them at an incredible speed, stabbing itself inside the eye of the beast. Tora flies in the air while holding the rest of them as Ushio grabs the spear before telling Tora that they are going to perform a combo. Tora starts becoming Pikachu again, while Lucio uses his spear to cut open the beast, leading them to make an escape with all of them safe. The next day, they all wait on the platform, when Naka starts asking Oshio whether it was him who saved her, as she doesn't remember anything because she hit her head on something. Lucio tells her that she must have imagined him, and that he just found her on the beach with the boy. The little shit also comes on the station to tell them not to leave, but Ushio replies that they are just going to get some milk and are definitely going to come back. Ushio returns home, but one thought has been constantly badgering him, ever since he met that little kid on the beach. Ushio's mother died when he was really young, but he never asked about her and neither did his dad ever tell him anything about her. He goes on to his dad and he straight up starts asking things about his own mother. His dad seems to be avoiding the topic, which leads them to get into a small fight before he leaves to receive a phone call. As soon as he tries to check where his dad is, he realizes that he is trying to run away again. Both the Ushio and Tora run after him, and he gets away before they can catch up to him. That evening, Ushio takes Tora with him to visit the grave of his mom and states that this is the first time he is coming here, and he doesn't even know whether she is buried here, or whether even that was a lie that his dad crafted. They stay there for a bit before Tora tells him that he is hungry, and they return to their place. Lucio sits down and starts using his massive spear as a weight to cook his cup noodles, while Tora eats his sausage. In the ensuing chaos, the cup falls over and he quickly starts cleaning his spear. Suddenly, his dad enters the room, notices that he has been using the spear for everyday tasks like cutting open sausages, and gets mad at him, before starting to worship the spear. He hands the spear back to Ushio, before telling him that they will talk about his mother after they are done with dinner. After the dinner, they sit around the veranda, overlooking the rain, when his dad simply throws an envelope full of money and tells him to keep it. Ushio gets enraged by it, thinking that his dad is telling him to forget about his mother by bribing him with money and ends up punching his dad. His dad tells him that the money wasn't a bribe and it was just for him to spend. As if he wants to know the truth about his mother and whether she is alive or not, he has to go on a trip. He then wears a karat uniform before telling Ushio that he is one of the demon hunters, working for a religious cult that has been exterminating demons from the earth for thousands of years. Before Ushio can take this information in, he tells him that his cult leader has deemed Tora to be a demon that needs to be exterminated, so he is going to fight Tora while Ushio should leave to find the truth about his mother. Ushio is still shocked at this revelation, whereas Tora is always itching for a fight, so he agrees and they proceed to walk out into the courtyard. They both engage in a standoff while Ushio watches in despair not knowing what to do as his dad starts chanting spells to exterminate Tora. Tora seems to be on edge as well, and they both run at each other, attacking in a split second, gauging each other's strength, before Tora tries to Pikachu the old monk, and he shoots a shuriken at him. Ushio keeps screaming at them to stop like a pathetic little girl while they acknowledge each other's strength and start battling out again, hitting each other full force with the intention to kill. Wushio runs in between them and tells them to stop, but he is completely ignored as they keep fighting above him. Wushio tries to stand up but is thrown away by them, as he watches them fighting like two bloodthirsty beasts. He once again tries to run in between, but is struck by a stray attack and thrown away yet again. 
This time, however, he gets mad and grabs his spear before cutting his dad's staff in half and scaring the crap out of Tora before hitting him on the head from the flat side of the spear. He then hits his dad, who blocked his attack, but is forced to back off. Boshio tells him that he cannot let him kill Tora as he can keep him under control. His dad smiles and says that he never intended to kill him and only wanted to check whether Ushio was man enough to step in and take control of the situation, and he passed the test. He reveals that he was given the job to evaluate whether Tora is still a mindless beast who will kill anyone who comes his way, or whether Ushio has actually tamed him. If Ushio hadn't tamed him, his dad would have been forced to eliminate both of them. Suddenly, Ushio realizes that they are surrounded by a bunch of hooded figures, as his dad announces to them that he deems both Ushio and Tora not a threat, and that they can use their abilities to kill demons. The men, however, don't seem to take this news very kindly, and one of them jumps in to attack Tora. Ushio's father, however, jumps in and blocks the attack, while telling them to back off as it was his duty to evaluate the two alone. His father tells him to take the spear and Tora and find his mom, while the men start attacking his father. He thinks for a moment before standing his ground, saying that he will never leave him alone in a situation like this. They get into a big brawl in which one of the priests tries to seal Tora, but his unbelievable strength shocks the priest as even after using the strongest sealing spell, Tora is able to walk towards him before punching him away. One of the priests captures his dad in Cage of Light and Ushio tries to attack the priest, but gets hit by his staff and falls back to the ground unconscious. When he wakes up, he finds both Tora and his dad looking at him and telling him that they defeated all of the other priests and that Tora didn't kill anyone. Bushio tells his dad that he can't leave him at this stage as those guys can come back for revenge, but his dad tells him to go and find his mom as he can handle these men by himself easily. The next morning, Ushio packs up and leaves on a journey with Tora to find the secrets of his mom and where she is. Ushio reaches the airport with Tora, who has never seen a plane before and is wildly excited to go near one. The concept of humans flying is unbelievable to him and he seems too eager to see how these planes work. Wushio is simply sitting on the seat, when he overhears a man talking to a girl, apologizing for the death of her father, and claiming that it was a demon that resulted in his death. The girl, however, gets mad at him and tells him that just because she is a kid, doesn't mean that she will believe anything that comes out of his stupid mouth. Apparently, her dad was a pilot, and on his last flight, his plane ended up crashing after having a near collision with another jet, which was being piloted by this man in the black suit, who knew her dad. She blames him for killing her dad because of it. This interests Lushio, who asks Tora whether he knows any demons that are found in the air. Tora replies that there is a demon called Fusu, who resides in the air and comes down to the ground, when he wants to eat humans. But if the humans are delivering themselves in the air, that means he doesn't have any need to come down. He also tells Ushio that he fought Fusumu once, and that demon is one slay bastard. He is basically made entirely of jelly, and physical attacks are mostly useless on him, even Tora's Pikachu attack doesn't do anything. The only thing that seems to work on him is huge amounts of fire. They start boarding in and like a total creep, Wushio follows the girl and sits beside her before striking up a conversation. The flight starts moving and he notices that the girl seems to be scared, so without asking he grabs her hand because everyone knows that consent is a myth. The girl seems to be taken aback, but he starts saying that even he is scared, and it's better if they are scared together. What a loser. Tora, on the other hand, seems to be having the time of his life, watching outside the window. Some time passes and the girl, whose name is Yu, ends up sleeping. The black-suited man walks up and covers her with a blanket before sitting beside Ushio and telling him that Ushio might think that he is lying, but he in fact saw the monster. Ushio claims that he was brought up in a religious household and that he believes in his story, however wacky it may sound. They sit down in silence when suddenly the man gets up and claims that he is feeling a weird pressure, which he felt that day when he saw that monster and suddenly, the plane starts shaking weirdly, and as soon as they see out of the window, they spot a poorly rendered, weird-looking green snot monster engulfing the entire plane. The plane starts losing elevation at a very rapid rate when Tora walks up to him and tells him to get his spear out. Ushio tells him that the spear is in the luggage compartment, but Ushio tells him that it is not a normal spear, and if he calls it, it will appear in his hands. Ushio focuses on the spear and it rushes up through the floor into his hands, the suited man rushes towards the cockpit and busts the door open to see that there are no pilots there, so he quickly sits down and starts navigating the plane while asking for assistance from the Air Force. The Air Force, however, denies his requests as they don't see anything weird on the radar. Bushio tells Tora to get out of the plane and beat the crap out of Fusumu, but Tora claims that he is in no mood for a fight and is here just for a vacation. 
But Shiva starts chasing Tora before poking him from behind and forcing him to go on top of the plane to fight Fuzumu. Tora begins his duel against the snot monster and uses his fiery breath to push him back a little, which was enough to let the pilot gain control of the flight again. Tora tries to fight against the snot monster, but his punches are of no use and his fire is not enough to completely disintegrate the monster. Ushio runs into the cockpit and tells the pilot that they need a lot of fire to defeat this monster, but the pilot says that the Air Force are refusing to help as they can't see anything on the radar. Toru appears in front of them and tells Ushio that he will pin the monster down and during that time he needs to stab the monster through the roof and he goes away. Ushio quickly goes inside the plane and waits around for Tora's signal, when suddenly Yu walks up to him and tells him that she wants to be a part of it. What a dumb woman. Ushio looks at her and agrees to it. What a dumb man. They both get in position as Tora is somehow able to pin the monster down before giving Ushio the signal, who thrusts the weapon through the roof of the plane, stabbing the monster, critically damaging him. The monster loses composure and ends up revealing itself on the radar, which results in the Air Force being called. They confirm the presence of this monster, but tell the pilot that the monster is too close to the plane, and if they fire missiles at it, the entire plane would crash. Wushio quickly runs up into the cockpit and tells Tora to take him on top of the plane, and they both decide to deal with this monster together. They run towards the monster but are stopped when he grabs both of them in his snot-covered hands. Wushio, however, breaks through with the help of his spear, and alongside Tora is able to cut his limbs off, releasing the plane from its grasp. The Air Force decides that this is a good time to intervene, and launches a missile at the monster, killing it immediately. The problems haven't subsided yet, as the pilot informs Ushio that the back landing gears have been broken, and there is no way for a safe landing in these conditions. Ushio immediately tells Tora to go outside and lift the plane up, and he does so, ensuring a safe landing, as both of them decide to board off and go their own way. Ushio goes out in a dressing room to try on some clothes when he realizes that he seems to have lost the money that his dad gave him. If I was his dad, I would have definitely gone out for one last milk run. Tora seems to be uninterested in this and asks Ushio, Why does it matter? Whether they have money or not, but Ushio knows that this world is filled with capitalist American pigs, and he believes in socialism. They finally move outside to try and find a police station to lodge a complaint, when suddenly, a bunch of people seem to get a mysterious cut somewhere on their body. Ushio seems to be confused, but looks around to see a small whirlwind in the corner, but Tora immediately tells him to be on guard, as it is not a small dust devil, but a demon. Suddenly, a large dog-like animal attacks Ushio, whose spear moves on its own to block the attack, but the creature attacks him again, cutting him multiple times all over his body which enrages him and he transforms into his Chad self and cuts the demon's blade before slamming him on the ground and threatening to kill him. Suddenly, a voice from behind tells him to stop, and he turns around and spots a beautiful lady dressed in red spandex bent down on the floor begging him not to kill the demon and to listen them out. Tora tells him that they could have killed him already if they wanted to, and they were just testing out whether you had the beast's spear or not. They get into a train together and reach a small cottage deep inside the mountains, where they both introduce themselves as siblings, who are an ancient race of demons and have a request for him. Bushio seems to be confused, but they suddenly bow down to the ground and tell them that they want him to kill their brother Juro. He gets shocked at this statement and berates them for even thinking of killing their own blood, and that he is not some hitman that could be hired to kill demons on anyone's whims. He grabs his spear and tells Tora that they are leaving, but suddenly, one of the demons throws a severed hand in front of him, telling him that this belongs to a human from a nearby village, who was killed by their brother Juro, and if Ushio doesn't stop him, he will keep killing even more humans. The woman takes Tora outside, whereas the guy starts giving Ushio some well-needed context. He tells him that their race of demons have been inhabiting hills and dense forests for centuries, and have no ill feelings towards humans to begin with. They tend to just hide themselves and live in peace, but lately, humans started invading their places. They started using a strategy in which they stay in a group three, and if a human comes near their area, one of them distracts him, while the other one delivers a small cut, and the third demon rushes to heal him with their special healing potion, and this all happens within a blink of an eye. The humans aren't harmed in any way, but this scares them away from the area, making them think that there are ghosts that haunt the area. He also tells him that among their race there is a law which states that they should neither kill a human unprovoked or without any reason, but from some time now Juro has been disregarding their law completely, and is on a rampage of killing humans left and right. He looks into Ushio's eye and very seriously asks him whether he would kill Juro for them, as they can't bring themselves to harm their own brother. 
Just then, Bashiro's ears start ringing and his spear starts acting on its own and suddenly, a wall is cut to shreds and a young emo guy stand there, calling the man his brother and telling him that he is here to say his final goodbye as he is going to go on his own from now on and kill as many humans as possible. The guy reminds Juro that killing humans is against the law, but Juro tells him that the humans started it as all they ever wanted was to live in peace uninterrupted, but it was humans who always invade their place and force them to leave their homes and find new ones every single time. But now he wishes to change it and is going to instill so much fear in humans that they won't even think of ever expanding their area. He rips out his human skin and tells them that he is never going to assume the form of a human again, when suddenly he looks at Ushio, as he senses the power of the legendary spear coming from him and gets insanely mad, shouting at his siblings and asking whether they want him dead so badly that they will ask the help of human. Ushio, as usual, is always angry and runs at him with his spear, but Juro ends up using a single slash of his blade to mortally injure Ushio, who simply falls on the ground motionless and unbreathing. The spear flies on its own and attacks Juro, but he is able to block it in time to deliver the final blow to Ushio. When suddenly Tora throws one of his severed arms through Juro's chest, surprising him and stopping him in his tracks. Juro looks behind to see Tora who screams at him that Ushio is his food, and no one can kill him but Tora. Juro gets scared of this huge Pikachu and runs away. Tora walks up to Ushio and tells him that they should simply leave and go to Hokkaido to find his mom, but realizes that he still seems to be completely lifeless and a little dead. He shakes him and gets super angry at him for dying so easily. Suddenly, the woman named Kagari tells him that the damage dealt by a demon of their race can only be cured by a special medicine and hands it over to Tora, who uses it on Ushio, saving his life. Ushio immediately wakes up with a gasp and tells Tora that Juro has nothing but hate inside of him and he will kill any human he sees if they leave him alone. He looks over to the siblings and asks them where Juro is headed and starts running outside, but he suddenly notices that Tora seems to have lost one of his arms and gets worried for him, even crafting a cast for him to try and fix his arm. They all go outside and start running towards a construction site, where Juro is waiting for the new shift to begin so that he can kill all of the workers there. They reach an empty clearing and look around for Juro, when suddenly, Wushio is attacked by an angry Juro, who is furious that Kagari healed the human. Bushio dodges and both of Juro's siblings try to stop him, but he is too strong and attacks them as well, pushing them back. Wushio runs up to him and jumps up in the air to attack him, and is able to push through his spear, hitting Juro and injuring him. Juro immediately runs up a cliff and cuts the edge of the cliff, making a huge area crumble on top of Ushio and the others. Thankfully, Wushio was in his Chad form and alongside Tora is able to hold the boulder, preventing them from getting crushed. Unfortunately, however, both of the siblings end up getting stuck beneath Truck Kun, which starts leaking oil and they are unable to move. Wushio quickly screams at Tora to leave the boulder and help the siblings escape as the oil can catch fire, which will result in an explosion. At first, Tora is reluctant to help them, but after Ushio pleads with him, he decides to help them and moves over to try and lift Truck Kun off of them before it eyes case them into another world. Juro comes down to finish the job, but he notices that Ushio and Tora are helping his siblings, which changes his heart a little bit, and then Ushio spouts some moralistic bullshit, which I am not going to write down, but this ends up making Juro reconsider his choices when suddenly, the new shift workers arrive at the scene, and after having a look at Juro, think that he is some kind of an animal, and start throwing rocks at him. Juro looks around and gets furious at them, swearing to kill them all, making them all run away, but one of the workers was smoking a cigarette, which ends up lighting truck, Hans piss on fire. Kuro was about to go behind the humans when Tora screams at him to help them save his siblings, and after a moment's hesitation, Juro runs towards Tora, trying to lift truck Kun. However, truck Kun seems to be very OP and doesn't move at all, which makes Ushio scream for help. Hearing his cries for help, some of the construction workers end up running towards the burning wreckage and helping them lift truck Kun off of the siblings, saving them. They all overlook the explosion as Ushio thinks that Juro might have had a change of heart and starts asking him to give humans another chance, and that he will personally find them a place to live and make sure that humans stay out of it. For a moment, Juro seems to have changed, but suddenly he lunges at Ushio, trying to attack, but Ushio uses his spear to stab Juro in the heart, killing him immediately. After that unsavory encounter with Juro, Ushio was disturbed and also physically hurt so the siblings showed him the location of a secret hot spring with healing properties that's supposed to get rid of any injuries and diseases that you might be troubled with. Both of them seem to enjoy the hot bath when suddenly Ushio overhears a girl singing in a very beautiful voice, which makes him investigate. However, she gets startled and runs away from the spring, making Ushio ashamed of himself for scaring the girl. 
Tora doesn't understand why any of them should be upset over it, and tells Oshio that he felt a weird vibe coming from the girl, and he thinks that the girl is not a normal human. Bushio dismisses him, saying that he is just cautious around humans. Later that day, they both go over to the town again, to grab a bus so they can leave for Hokkaido, when Ushio suddenly notices the same girl walking near the pavement but seems to get disbalanced and almost gets ice caved by Truck Kun. But once again, Ushio comes in for his save at last and pushes her out of the way. The girl seems to have gotten unconscious and one of the ladies of a nearby store tells him that this girl's name is Saya, and she belongs to the household of the richest landlord of this town, before pointing over to a giant mansion on top of the hills. Ushio decides to put Saya on his back and starts taking her up the hill. Tora calls him a giant sissy simp because the only reason he is doing this is because he likes the girl, but like every simp in the world, Ushio has gone down a giant hole of degeneracy from which he can never recover. While carrying her up, she wakes up and apologizes for troubling him, but tells him that she was trying to find him in the town. This surprises Ushio as he is actually meeting her for the first time. She tells him that she can walk, but as Ushio puts her down, she turns around and spots Tora in front of her. She gets a little taken aback and this surprises both Oshio and Tora as not everyone can see demons unless and until they decide to reveal themselves. She reveals that she comes from a long line of people who have worked to bridge the communication gap between humans and demons and are trying to stop the conflict between humans and demons, as they believe that if only humans and demons could communicate, they could live more peacefully together. She tries walking but starts stumbling again due to dizziness, which makes Ushio carry her again as he runs up the hill to her house. He enters her place and sits down in a room with her when, suddenly, her father and her grandmother enter the room and seem to be angry. He screams at her for going out of the house when she knows that she is an invalid and can't operate on her own. He also starts chastising her, telling her that she is only good for causing trouble and should simply stay locked up in the house like an animal, because that's what she deserves. This enrages Ushio, who starts talking back to her father, telling him that he is fat and ugly. The dad gets angry as well, and just when it seemed like they were going to end in a physical confrontation, Saya stops them and begs her father to give her 30 minutes to talk to Ushio, and then she won't go out again, and he agrees before leaving. Ushio is still fuming about her father and asks her how she can simply hear all that abuse, but she starts talking about some woke things about how this is all patriarchy, when Ushio tells her to shut up and to tell him why she was brought here. She replies to him that centuries ago, one of the ancestors of her father ended up capturing a god in their house and binding her in a room with a bunch of spells. The god is famed for being a very prosperous charm as whoever has the blessing of this god will have all the riches they can want, so their ancestors simply imprisoned the god to keep getting her blessings. Now that's what I call a pro-gamer move. Wushiva starts following her as she tells him that her bloodline from her mother's side has been a very weak line of women with a lot of ailments, making them fragile. When she was a child and her mom was on her deathbed, she explained to her that she is supposed to keep communicating with the goddess so she didn't grow tired or sad. She then opens a room and they all enter inside to find it covered with charms and spells and behind it, a Chinese-looking girl sitting on the floor. Saya walks ahead and sits beside the Chinese girl who asks her whether this is the boy with a beast spear. She then looks over to Tora and greets him, as she seems to know about him. She is confused, however, as to why he is traveling alongside a human when he is supposed to be the king of demons, who everyone is scared of. Tora tells her that it is a long story and he isn't going to waste his time talking to her. He asks her what she wants from them. She tells them that she wants them to destroy the barrier that is keeping her in place. She tells Ushio that this barrier is made up of extremely strong enchantments, and the only way to break it is by using the beast's spear, which is attached to a user that it recognizes. Tora looks at her and asks her whether she knows what will happen if the barrier breaks, and she replies that she does. Both Bushio and Saya seem confused, so Tor elaborates by saying that once the barrier is broken, a huge amount of energy will be released all at once, which will most probably destroy the guy for good. Saya is shocked by this news and tells them that she had no idea about it. The Chinese girl tells her that this is good for the both of them, but Saya refuses to agree to this. Suddenly, Saya's dad enters the room, realizing what they were doing, and immediately attacks Oshio, who blocks the attack with a spear. The man attacks him again, but this time he simply moves out of way before spanking him, which is very kinky. Bashio goes on the offensive now while the man tries to defend against his attacks. Tor decides to try and Pikachu the barrier, but it doesn't work. The Chinese girl begs Ushio once again to destroy the barrier, and this time Ushio pushes the man away before running towards the barrier. Surprisingly, however, he is stopped when Saya stands in front of him and tells him that she cannot let him destroy the barrier, as it will kill the Chinese girl. 
Before Ushio can decide what to do, the bodyguards of the household rush Ushio and grab him. While the man tries to kill him using his sword, Batora comes to the rescue, snapping the sword in half before pushing himself through the barrier, while trying to put a layer of electricity around him to try and protect him from the barrier. He gets halfway inside the barrier and screams at Ushio to destroy it while he protects the Chinese girl, but Ushio, the giant simp, tells him that this is Sei's decision. Tora tells him to become a white knight later as he is getting hurt, but Ushio is steadfast and tells him that only Sei can make a decision. Sei is an even bigger dumbass, who keeps thinking about what to do even though Tora already told her that he would protect the Chinese girl from the explosion. Finally, Ushio decides to break the seal and slices the charm in half, setting the god free. However, as soon as he does that, a huge explosion erupts, but Tora protects the god, and Ushio protects Saya. When the dust settles, they see that the entire house has been demolished, and that the god has safely ascended back to the heavens where she belongs. Afterwards, Ushio and Tora again leave to continue their journey after having one last chat with Saya, who tells Ushio that she will be strong from now on, and will take her destiny in her hands. You can't be very strong with anemia and heart problems, so I think she's talking crap. Oshio and Tora decide to stay with the doggy siblings for another night, as they miss their bus because of Saya, and at night, after having dinner, Ushio goes outside near the pond to chill out, but while staring at the calm black water, it suddenly starts vibrating and a vision appears inside of the water, in which he sees Naka, holding a mirror, and crying out Ino's name again and again with a horrified look. Before Ushio could even register what was going on, the vision disappeared from the surface of the pond, leaving him completely bewildered. He rushes inside the room, totally shaken, and asks Tora if he knows about any mirror demons before telling him what he just saw. Tora says that he doesn't have any idea about this, but the Dobby siblings tell him that they know a demon who is an expert in mirrors, and they can take him up to the demon. Ushio immediately agrees, and even Tora follows soon as they climb through a dangerous mountain before reaching a dark cave. The siblings call upon the demon and identify themselves, claiming that they have come here in peace. Soon, a shiny thing emerges from the cave, which turns out to be a demon that literally looks like a mirror. He greets the siblings and starts talking to them when suddenly, he starts trembling and comments that something seems to be amiss. He feels an overwhelming power near him, and then he suddenly notices Ushio standing behind them with a beast spear, which scares the demon so much that he starts running back into the cave. The siblings try to tell him that Lucio doesn't kill indiscriminately and only kills demons who create problems, but the mirror boy is a loser, isn't ready to hear them out, and keeps running inside when he is suddenly grabbed by Tora, whom he immediately recognizes and gets scared even more. Tora tells him that he is not here to waste time and threatens him to tell them everything he knows, so finally the demon obliges and tells them he will try to show them what happened on an incognito tab. His body becomes a TV, and they watch as both Maka and Ino come back from school with a bunch of food and snacks, as they want to have a sleepover. They have a lot of fun, but after a while sit down to have a chat, when suddenly, an antique mirror that Ino's dad bought recently starts vibrating, and before they can react, a giant demon erupts from it aiming to capture Naka, but Ino pushes her out of the way and gets caught instead by the demon, who takes her inside the mirror. Bushio gets extremely angry and converts into his chat avatar before telling the mirror to transport them to Ino's house. The mirror gets scared and obliges, but tells them that they can't stay inside the mirror for long, otherwise, they will get trapped forever. After hearing that, they jump inside his body and come out of the other end into Ino's place, where they find Naka still crying. They immediately ask a bewildered Naka where the mirror is, and as soon as she tells them, they jump inside the mirror, but the idiot Naka also jumps in alongside them like a total third-wheeler. They travel inside the belly of the beast, where they finally spot the monster in the midst of some beautiful clouds. He still has Ino with him, which enrages both Tora and Ushio, as they rush towards him at full speed. The monster throws a bunch of creepy-looking leeches at them that get stuck to Tora's body, but he uses his strength to get them off of him before flying towards the monster. They rush through the monster, and with a single attack, Yuzio slices the monster in half, killing it immediately, before grabbing Ino and rushing out of the mirror. The strain of the adventure knocked both Naka and Ino out, who were then carried by Tora and Ushio, who laid them down on the floor before leaving the scene. For mercy, Ushio and Tora say their final goodbyes to the doggy siblings, before they leave their place to go to the bus stop. Ushio tells Tora to simply carry him and leap from this bus stop to the next one, but Tora wants to travel in a bus again, as he has never really done it before. They get into the bus, and Tora is beyond himself with happiness, playing around and having fun, but within five minutes he gets bored and starts annoying Ushio by telling him to make the bus go fast, but suddenly he falls completely quiet, 
Ushio looks at him and asks him whether anything is wrong, but Tora simply tells him to concentrate, and suddenly, the spears start ringing very wildly. Tora tells him that he can feel a bunch of demons in this area, and all of them seem to have an agenda against him, and are extremely angry. Ushio gets surprised and asks Tora why they would hate him, but Tora replies that he has killed several monsters, and maybe that's why they are mad. The bus keeps moving and Tora senses even more demons, and all of them are brimming with hate for Ushio. Suddenly, a flying squirrel-like demon breaks through the front glass of the bus and hits the driver in the head, killing him immediately, before making a beeline for Ushio, who immediately takes out his spear and dodges the attack. The bus gets out of control and hits the side rail, before starting to fall off the cliff. The demon comes in again with an attack, but this time, Ushio slices the demon in half and lands on the ground above alongside Tora as he looks down below at how Bus Khan eyes cage so many people at once. Before they can figure out what's going on, hundreds of monsters start coming out from the side of the road, cornering both Ushio and Tora. They start fighting their way through the monsters, killing them one at a time, but still, they are way too much for them to handle. Tora seems to be completely fired up and tells Ushio that he hasn't fought against this many opponents in a long while. Ushio, however, is scared that the battle will result in more human casualties, so he tells Tora that they need to take the battle into the forests. They rush inside the dense vegetation and keep running when suddenly, a demon appears from beneath the ground and grabs Ushio's leg, telling him that he will kill both him and his mother. Suddenly, hundreds of monsters appear again around them and start attacking him. Tora tries to save him but is stopped by a giant white ape-looking idiot monster. He makes fun of Tora for trying to save a human, before calling him pathetic. Just when things seem like they were going south, the spear bits a life from its own and cuts through the demons before dragging Ushio outside of the jungle and only stopping once they were near a lake. He is still super confused as to what just happened, when the spidey senses of his spear start tingling again and he gets defensive again. He shouts at the monster to reveal itself, when a meek voice calls out to him for mercy, telling him that he means no harm. Ushio tells him to reveal himself, and the monster comes out of the water. This monster is a kappa, who is usually deemed harmless and likes playing pranks on humans. The monster walks towards the injured Ushio as he asks kappa, Why are the monsters trying to kill him? And is this because he killed their brethren? Kappa looks surprised to know that Ushio has no idea why the monsters are behind him, and tells him that the monsters are behind him because of his mother. Kappa reveals that Ushio is famous among all of the demons in Japan, as he is the son of the woman who saved the most dangerous monster of all time. Kappa tells him that thousands of years ago, a young girl came on a ship from China, but the image of the young girl was merely a facade as her true identity was that of a demon called Hakuman. He was the strongest and the most ancient demon of them all, and he was so insanely strong that no one could even lay a finger on him. He deemed that every other demon apart from him was inferior and didn't deserve to live, and he started killing all because of this, all of the demons came together and declared an all-out war against Hakuman, but it was of no use as he was too strong and killed a bunch of the monsters. Later, Tora also joined the battle from their side, and after a lot of struggle, they were finally able to push Hakuman back who swore that he would come back, more powerful than ever, and kill every single one of them. He starts applying Lu on Oshio's body for some reason, and continues that the demons then wanted to give chase and finish him off while he was in a weakened state, but Tor had no such interest and returned to his area where later he fought against an ancestor of Ushio and got pinned to the wall. The other demons who gave chase to Hakuman were finally able to locate him and try their very best to kill him by attacking all at once, but they were unable to even lay a scratch on the demon because he was being protected by a very strong barrier, which was created by Ushio's mother. That is the reason why they weren't able to kill the evil Hakuman, and now harbored deep hatred towards Ushio and his mother. Suddenly, Ushio senses a bunch of demons coming towards him and gets on edge again, but Kappa tells him to quickly run towards the village as the demons won't enter that area. He thanks Kappa for the unwarranted massage and says that he will return for his happy ending before running away in the distance. He runs inside of the forest once again and is immediately surrounded by a bunch of demons. He tries to defend himself but the demons but he cannot fight against such an overwhelming army alone. Suddenly, he hears a scream and notices an old guy inside of the forest, so he quickly grabs him, putting him on his back before running away immediately. He asks the old man for the directions of the village and the old guy points him in direction through the forest, where he keeps running to suddenly see a bunch of small lights in the distance, relieved that safety is finally in sight. Oshio runs with the old man and finally reaches the village where he is taken to the shop of an old woman who gives him a bunch of milk and some food to eat, as he looks famished. 
Bushio eats happily while talking to the old man, who explains that he was shocked to see so many monsters, while the old lady comments that it is even hard to imagine that these monsters exist today. The old man starts asking Ushio questions about him as he seems to be fascinated by his powers. Ushio pauses for a bit, thinking about the best way to introduce the story without sounding like a total lunatic, and tells him since the start about how he took the spear out of Tora, and ever since that day, he has been fighting against these demons on stop. The old man looks at him with an understanding gaze when Ushio gives him a cream bun, telling him that he hasn't eaten anything. After talking to him for some time more, he decides to leave, and while outside, suddenly his spear starts ringing wildly, and he realizes that there are demons around. He screams at the old man to quickly go inside of the house, but before he could do so, hundreds of demons appear out of nowhere, surrounding him completely. He defends the old man, a giant demon grabs him from behind, but he is able to break free by slashing through him, before deciding to run as fast as possible, while screaming at the people roaming outside to go inside their houses and protect themselves. One of the giant demon snakes tries to kill a woman and her child, but thankfully, Wushio is able to slice through the demon and continue his marathon. He finally reaches an abandoned area and turns around to face his demons literally. A giant dinosaur demon attacks him, but Ushio is able to block its attack before killing it in a single slash. The demons gang up on him and gangbang him from multiple directions, hurting him badly, to the point where he is having trouble simply standing up. He falls over to the ground and looks up to see a monster about to attack him, but he is so powerless that he simply accepts his death. At the last moment, however, the doggy siblings come to the rescue, slashing through the nearby demons before standing in front of him. Bushio notices that they seem to be already hurt by fighting the demons and asks them to run away, but they tell him that they owe him their lives and won't leave his side. They rush towards the monsters again, killing a bunch of them all at once, but suddenly a massive demon arrives on the scene and hits Kagari with its club, hurting her. The giant unicorn monster threatens the sibling to stop defending Ushio, if they know what's best for them, and sends a bunch of small worm-like monsters on Ushio, but he is able to slash through them all with a bit of reserved courage. They stand back to back while Kakari asks Ushio where Tor is, to which he replies that he must have sided with the demons and left him for dead. Kagari, however, refuses to believe this and clings on to the hope that he will show himself saving them all. The unicorn monster breaks through the brother's blade and hurts him, before trying to strike a deal with the doggy siblings, telling them that if they kill Ushio for him, he will let them live. Hushio tells them to take the offer, as he is not going to make it out of this alive anyway. But the siblings tell him once again that they will die before they leave his side, and they run at the army of the demons on one last suicide charge. When suddenly, lightning strikes and every demon around an area is instantly killed, and to everyone's surprise, Tor emerges and grabs all three of them before telling the unicorn monster that Mushio is his food and no one else can touch him, before leaping in the air and landing somewhere deep in the forest. Mushio gets off and turns around to thank Tora, but suddenly both Tora and the doggy siblings disappear in the mist, as the night mysteriously turns into a day, and when he turns around he spots a massive mansion in front of him that calls his name. The doors open on their own as the mysterious voice tells him to march inside. He is shocked to see such a big mansion and a little scared as well, but he puts on his big boy shoes and keeps walking until he enters a room to see the Chinese girl sitting alongside a weird old dude with a limp nose who might need some performance enhancement pills. He walks towards the Chinese girl, surprised to see her here, and asks what is going on. It is revealed that the old guy here is the leader of the monsters in this area and he wants to strike a deal with Oshio. He tells him the same story about why the monsters are trying to kill him because a woman protects the legendary monster Hakuman who is a silver-colored, nine-tailed beast. He says, however, that humans cannot live for that long, which means that the protection of Hakuman has been generationally given to the woman in the bloodline and currently is being handled by Ushio's mother. He says, however, that after talking to Ushio, he realized that humans are not completely irrational and that there must be a reason why this woman is defending a monster. Bushio interrupts, saying that this is the first time they are talking, but the old guy reveals that the old villager he saved from the forest was only him, disguised to see Oshio's true nature. He claims that they want to know the reason why his mother is protecting the monster, and will let him go see her, but he needs to extract information for them. Bushio agrees to it, and he sends a command to all of the demons, saying that Ushio is off-limits now and shouldn't be attacked until further order, but this causes turmoil amongst the monsters. They all go outside to see Tora and the Dobby siblings facing off against the entire demon army. The old man tells the demons that he has given orders which must be followed, but the unicorn monster says that he cannot follow these orders as Tora and Ushio have killed a bunch of their brethren. Tora makes fun of the unicorn guy before being challenged to a one versus one battle. 
Tor excitedly agrees and the old man sets the terms, stating that if Tor wins they are going to follow orders and not attack the boy, but if he loses they can disobey his orders. What a crappy leader, he definitely needs some enhancement pills. The battle starts and the unicorn immediately crushes Tor on the ground before repeatedly battering him with his club and then sends a bunch of hand snakes at him which bite his entire body. Bushio starts getting worried, as Tora is drawn closer to the monster before he uses his horns to stab Tora through the stomach. Suddenly, however, the tides of the battle turn, as Tora grabs his club and chastises him for being weak, then blames it on a human before becoming a Chorizid, and using his Flammenwerfer to completely burn the unicorn and then immediately jumps up in the sky and Pikachu's the shit out of the monster, turning him black. He is not done though as he then starts battering the monster, punching him again and again before delivering one final punch, defeating the monster. The duel ends as the old guy tells the monsters not to attack Ushio anymore and both he and Tora leave into the forest to continue their journey of finding Ushio's mom. The next day, they finally reach Hokkaido and start walking towards the town, when they are suddenly covered in mist and seem to have lost the direction they were supposed to walk in. Tora blames it on Ushio, saying that he had one job, which is totally fair to be honest. While walking, however, they suddenly feel the presence of some demons and a weird, creepy-looking spider demon attacks Bushio. He is able to block the attack, but before he could do anything else, a mysterious girl appears out of his ass and uses her comms to kill the monster in a single hit. Now that's what I call women power. The girl looks at him and tells him that it was one of the monsters set free by Hakuman before asking whether he is named Ushio. She looks at him and scoffs at him for being a child, saying that she can't believe the beast's spear is being handled by a worthless child. Ushio tries to say that he isn't a child, but he gets bitch slapped mid-sentence, and the woman starts telling him that she belongs to the secret society that kills these demons, and she has been trained since she was a child to be the successor to the beast's spear, only to be stopped in her tracks because of Ushio. She looks at Ushio and tells him to hand over the spear because he is not fit enough to wield it. Ushio seems shaken by this, but she starts unloading a barrage of insults at him, making him feel small and weak. She told him that it was his fault that the people got ice cave by Bus Khan, and it was his fault that Juro died and everything that has happened to him, and the people around him is purely because of him being unable to draw the full power of his spear, failing at every turn. This truly hollows Ushio out, who starts thinking about the past and how he has failed so many people. The girl moves her hand and grabs Ushio's spear. Ushio doesn't even try to stop her and lets her have his spear, after which she claims that now that she has the spear, she will be unstoppable and kill every single demon working under Hakuman before leaving the scene into the mist and telling Ushio to go back home. Ushio simply starts brooding, but for Tora is the best day of his life. He has been waiting for Ushio to be without his spear so he can kill him and finally he doesn't have his spear. He jumps at him, but then stops because Ushio is in a completely broody mood and starts trying to cheer him up. Suddenly, they notice a bunch of creepy leech monsters flying above them, but instead of trying to attack, they simply move towards the girl who ran away with the spear. Ushio looks at the demons, gets a bit worried for the girl, and decides to go after her. The spear seems to have rejected the girl, and she is trapped in the arms of the monster, completely unable to move. Just as the monster was about to kill her, Ushio ran behind her and grabbed his spear before attacking the monster and making it drop the girl. The girl is shocked to see the Chad version of Ushio with long hair and seems to like what she sees. Ushio grabs the spear and rushes towards the demon at full speed, slicing through all of its tentacles before trying to end the fight, but is stopped when the monster hits him and throws him back. Ushio gets up again and jumps at the monster, but is stopped mid-track, when the monster uses its leech monsters to grab the poor girl laughing in Ushio's face, claiming that he has learned that these tactics are very efficient against humans. Ushio looks behind and jumps in the air before throwing his spear at the girl, shocking even the monster, as he didn't expect him to be so ruthless. The spear sets the girl free, but the monster grabs Ushio and starts squeezing him to death. Toro arrives at the last moment, however, and jumps at the monster with amazing anger, and tears his arms off before biting the monster in the face, freeing Ushio. He quickly calls for his spear and rushes at the monster, slashing it in half, killing it immediately. He grabs the girl's comb from the ground and hands it back over to him, showing her the comb that belongs to her mother. He looks at the girl and asks her whether he could keep the spear for a bit longer till he finds his mother and the girl, like a classic sundier, tells him that she isn't impressed and will let him keep the spear for just a bit longer, and warns him that there are three other people like her who were trained to be the successor of the beast's spear and might come for him. 
Ushio thanks her, and then finally finds his way into a restaurant where he has a hearty breakfast alongside Tora, and finally comes outside to get a bus and try to find his mother. While outside, he starts thinking about whether he is good enough for the spear, but then Tora starts making fun of him, and they have some friendly banter when he trips and hits his head on a motorcycle. How did he not hear a motorcycle just come up behind him? Helen Keller alert. He looks behind him to see a dashing dude on a pretty looking motorcycle. The dude says some weird foreshadowy things, but Ushio is too engrossed, acting like he just snorted a bunch of crack and doesn't really pay attention before the dude asks him whether he would like to ride him. I mean, whether he would like to ride his bike. Ushio looks at him, but feels weird so refuses before going to the bus stop to catch the next bus. On the way, however, Tora feels a weird gaze looking at him and turns around to see the dude staring at him from afar. He gets mad at this and rushes back, leaving Ushio and confronts the stranger, asking him whether he is one of the people who are after the beast's spear. Ushio starts calling Tora back, saying that he will leave without him, but Tora pays no attention to him. The guide introduces himself as Akiba, who is one of the chosen successors for the spear, but claims that he is more interested in Tora than the spear. It doesn't matter to Tora, however, as he simply rushes at Akiba, attacking him. Both of them get into a brawl and seem to be equally matched as Akiba tries to gain the upper hand by hitting Tora again and again with his staff. Tora tries to Pikachu Akiba, but fails as his staff is made up of some weird metal, which can control electricity, I guess, and he redirects it back to Tora. Tora decides to become Chureza this time, but Akiba simply dodges the attack and hits him on the head before getting a spike out his ass and using it to pin his arms on the wall. This hurts Tora as he tries to get out of it, but fails while Akiba explains that the metal is specially made to seal demon powers and Tora cannot escape it. He looks at Tora and asks him why he's with Ushio. He claims that Tora is supposed to be a monster who was born 2,000 years ago in China, can breathe fire and control electricity, is one of the physically strongest demons alive and loves terrorizing humans, so why is he following the commands of a human now, becoming his pet? Tora tells him to shut up and snaps at him, but Akiba blocks his attack and jumps back before trying to make Tora his personal Jesus. He claims that they have been following Tora's movements ever since he escaped the basement, but have been shocked to see him saving humans and demons alike. Tora starts laughing and claims that he simply stays with Oshio, without killing him because he doesn't get bored when he is with him. To Akiba's horror, Tora starts ripping his hands and feet from his body and jumps at him for an attack. He dodges the attack but then Tora decides to show how creepy he can be and becomes a goddamn spider, chasing Akiba around who tries to come in for a final hit, but is headbutted by Tora, defeating him immediately. Tora then joins his limbs back to his body and spares Akiba's life, telling him not to look at him or Ushio again, before deciding to follow Ushio. Ushio, on the other hand, is inside a bus, which got possessed by some leech demons who are now controlling the bus as it goes out of control. It seems like Buscon is going to rack up a good body count this season. Ushio quickly gets up from his seat and rushes towards the driver only to find him completely swarmed by the leech monsters. He uses his spear to slice the driver free, but this just results in the entire bus being in the sole control of these monsters. The bus starts swerving into the guardrail, so Ushio breaks through one of the windows, considering jumping out to save himself, but the bus is going too fast and he can't simply leave all of these people inside. Buscon immediately starts ice king a bunch of cars into another world, while he stands there helpless, unable to think of a way to save all the people, when suddenly he hears the voice of Akiba from outside calling his name, and he sticks his head out of the window to find Tora and Akiba following them closely. Tora tells Ushio to simply jump out of the vehicle, but Ushio refuses, saying that there are a lot of people in here. Akiba and Tora hatch a plan and he tells Ushio to grab all the passengers from their seats and make them stand in the center. He turns around and screams at everyone to get up from their seats, and they all assemble in the center. When the leech monsters erupt again, and get stuck to Ushio, pinning him down so that he is unable to use his spear. Meanwhile, Akiba slashes through the backside of the bus, before using it to slash the front end as well, and then he signals Tora to take over, who uses his energy to blast all of the passengers except Ushio out of the bus. A bunch of leeches get stuck to Akiba, but he is able to use his special technique to create an energy blanket for them, and all the passengers fall onto it, without even a scratch. The problem, however, is that the bus is still moving towards the passengers on the road as Ushio is pinned down and unable to hit the brake. Akiba starts panicking, but Tora tells him to chill out, as he trusts Ushio. Suddenly, Ushio becomes a chad and slashes through the entire bus before stabbing his spear in Bus Kun's heart and using it to stop the bus just before it can hit the passengers. He gets off the bus and seems to be happy that everyone is fine, 
when he notices that some of the passengers have some injuries which saddens him. As he runs away like a little girl, blaming himself for their injuries. Akiba and Tora both go after him and Tora explains that Akiba is another one of the successors for the spear and Akiba tells him to wipe that stupid look off of his face as he is going to drop him where he needs to go. After saying this, Ushio gets on the bike and they all leave for their destination. On the way, however, they get followed by a bunch of bikers in black overalls and are forced to pull over. Ushio asks Akiba whether he knows these people and he replies that these are all the people who failed to be chosen as the potential candidates for wielding the spear. One of the girls removes her helmet, introducing herself as Jun, and tells Akiba that her brother is still missing. Ushio seems confused, so Akiba tells him that Jun's older brother is one of the potential successors for the spear and is the best of all four of them. His name is Satoru and he has mastered both the spiritual and the martial arts, making him stronger than any of the other candidates. Jun claims that her brother started acting weirdly ever since he heard the news of the beast spear and has disappeared completely recently, with no contact. Suddenly, Tora feels someone coming this way, whom he claims to be a pretty strong human. Suddenly, a purple monster comes out of the ground straight at Ushio, who blocks the attack with his spear. As the dust settles, a man with yellow hair and an overflowing white robe emerges, who seems to be controlling the demon. He introduces himself as Satoru, the real successor of the beast's spear, and sends his monster to attack Ushio again. Ushio jumps in for an attack as well, but he gets deep-throated immediately by the monster, who starts sucking him off. Akiba tells Satoru to stop before getting out his staff and attacking him, but Satoru is very strong and very quick, as he immediately blocks his attack and knees him in the stomach. The other bikers quickly decide to attack Satoru, even though Akiba tells them they are no match, and are immediately deep-throated by the same monster. Ushio feels totally helpless, as he sees the other guys on the brink of death, but as usual, MVP Tora arrives for the save and uses a single slash to set him free. Ushio quickly transforms into his chat form and rushes at the monster, slashing through it and setting the other guys free from its grip. He then sets his sights on Satoru himself, but Jun comes to his defense and stands in front of her brother, telling them to chill out. Satoru, however, is a misogynist and slaps her sister for speaking out of turn and for being a woman before something happens to him, and he starts losing control of himself and seems to be in immense pain. He tells them that he will deal with Oshio soon and disappears into the forest, Tora looks at them and tells them that Satoru is definitely infested by those leech monsters, and they seem to have taken control of his brain. This prompts Ushio to ask Tora, but there is any way of removing the monsters from his head, but Tora tells him that he couldn't care less for any other human. They all start moving again, and Ushio stops at a gas station and rushes inside the washroom before staring at the mirror like some drug-addled teen, and starting screaming for the mirror monster that he met with the doggy siblings. The monster appears and asks Ushio what he wants and Ushio explains the situation. Tor threatens him in a lighthearted manner, which scares the living daylights out of the mirror boy. And he quickly connects them with the leader of the monsters, who tells Ushio that the only way to get rid of them is to become an apparition and go inside him to kill them all. He can do that with the help of the spear, but there is no knowing whether he will be able to return to his normal form or not. After that, they all move on the road and establish a camp nearby, sitting by the campfire. Ekiba tells Ushio that when they were young, Jun was once attacked by a tree monster and Satoru, even though he was scared, killed the monster with a single punch, but instead of thanking Satoru, Jun got scared of him and was never able to thank him. Ushio is like cool story but who asked when suddenly a black hole opens in the air and a bunch of bug monsters appear from inside alongside Akiba, who attacks both Ushio and Tora with some magic chains which bind Tora and disarm Ushio. He sends his bug monsters who attack Ushio, while Jun tries to appeal to Satoru's humanity again, but he punches her aside. Jun, however, is a tough girl and grabs him again, telling him that she won't leave him, which gives Ushio and Tora enough time to break through the binds and Ushio slices the monsters up, while Tora Pikachus them to oblivion. Satoru starts going crazy and pulls a knife out of his ass. He was about to stab his sister, when Ushio threw his spear at him, flinging the knife out of his hands. Tatoru slowly regains consciousness and is horrified to see what he's about to do. He backs off the edge of the road before realizing that there is no way out of this nightmare and jumping off the road into the valley. Ushio rushes to the side of the road and throws his spear again just in time to pin him against the cliffside. He is then picked up by the rest, but seems to be in an unconscious state. They all surround the unconscious Satoru while Jun cries over him as if he were dead. Chill lady is just unconscious. Ushio, however, is a simp as we already know. 
and starts telling Akiba that he's going inside Sakshu's body and will definitely get rid of the monster inside of him. Akiba tries to stop him, telling him that he might never be able to return from this battle, but Ushio is thinking from the wrong head right now and doesn't care about all that. Akiba gets mad and grabs his staff telling Ushio that he will beat him up if he tries to go inside and goes on to attack Ushio, but stops at the last moment after seeing Ushio standing defiantly. He gets pissed off and then leaves Ushio to do whatever the hell he wants to do. Ushio peeks inside of the bike's mirror and calls upon the mirror monster again who warns him again that he will lose his humanity if he goes inside another person's body, but Ushio is fine with that. As a token of goodwill, the mirror monster sends another small furry monster named Izuna to help Ushio out when he is inside of the body and to act as a guide. The monster doesn't seem to like humans very well, but one counter with Tora scares him straight. Ushio tells Tora that he is sorry if he loses his humanity as Tora wanted to eat him, but Tora claims that he will go inside with him and eat him if he starts changing into something inhuman. The three of them rush towards the lying body of Satoru and jump inside, while Ushio tells Jem to grab Satoru's body as he might start moving. They all go inside of his body where everything is dark at first, but then he opens his eyes to see the inside of a human's body, which is very jarring for him to see nonetheless. Izuna tells them to follow him closely and not get lost before they realize that a horde of monsters is coming towards them. Ushio is determined, however, and rushes throughout the monster alongside Tora, totally decimating all of them. They keep running and finally Izuna shows them where the heart is when suddenly, the blood vessels inside the corrupted body grab Izuna, and soon both Tora and Ushio are also captured. Tora, tired of all this, decides to Pikachu his way out of this problem, even though Izuna tells him not to as this might damage Satoru's body, but it's too late as Tora uses the attack, making Satoru thrash around. Ushio tells Tora not to use the attack again, while his spear automatically rushes to the monster and stabs him which leads him to drop all three of them. Ushio then rushes towards it and forces the monster outside of his body, but this puts immense strain on his body, and he starts losing control over himself. Tora seems to be scared for Ushio, but thankfully, Ushio is able to get a hold of himself and runs ahead, telling them not to waste time. They start running up the spinal cord when they see another huge cord of flying creepy leech creatures. He cuts through a bunch of them, ends up getting caught by them, and when all seems lost, the power of love prevails as Jun, cries over his brother's body, which apparently is the greatest power of all time. Now this show is getting weird. So anyway, that weakens the demon inside the body a little bit, giving Ushio the chance to escape the monsters before he starts chopping up more of them for a stir-fried dish later. He keeps running when suddenly he stops mid-track as black things start coming out of his body as the beast spear tries to take control while Izuna and Tora both watch him. Thankfully, however, he is able to stay in control and starts running towards the brain when suddenly the boss monster comes down attacking them. Ushio gets ready for the final fight as both he and the boss man engage in a deathly melee. They both start attacking each other with incredible intensity, and soon Ushio realizes that this monster is not as weak and might cause them some trouble. The monster decides to try and intimidate Ushio and shows him how Hakuman looks, and just his unbelievably terrifying aura was scary enough that he kneels down and hides his face while the monster tries to take advantage of this and attacks Ushio, while he isn't looking. Thankfully, however, he is saved by the intervention of Izuna, who jumped in between tanking the blow and protecting Ushio, before he fell to the ground. Ushio grabs Izuma and falls back, putting him on the ground. But the monster pushes forward and tries to attack him. Ushio, however, blocks his attack and is now very mad. He starts forcing the monster back with a series of attacks, but Yuna's body is reaching its limits. He stands there panting, but Tora comes beside him and tells him that he has a plan. He tells Bushio that they need to lure the monster out near Satoru's eye, where Jun can use her love to kill the monster. Yes, this show really got weird. They run away from the monster, pretending to be scared, who follows them reaching near the eye, when suddenly, they turn around ready to face him. The monster realizes what's happening and tries to run away, but is caught and pushed by Izuna in front of the eye, so he can be killed. But by doing this, Izuma is also sacrificing his own life, which Ushio isn't ready to accept, and he goes against Tora's wishes of leaving Izuna to die and rushes towards the monster at an incredible speed, stabbing in the heart at the same time when Jun shows her power of love. They finally emerge from the tears of Satoru, who has now woken up, and they start rejoicing when suddenly, Ushio loses control of his body and starts getting controlled by the spirit of the beast spear. The spirit of the beast spear causes Ushio to scream in pain as his soul is consumed by it and his body transforms into a rabid beast. The beast mode Ushio attacks Tora, who tries to wake him up using Takno Jutsu, 
but Ushio can't even hear him. Satoru and Akiba use their powers to restrain him, but he breaks through the confinement easily and then flees. The gang chases after him and reach a temple in Oshio's direction and find that some dear girl Hinawa there, who claims to already know the location of Oshio. Apparently, there is a cave where the users of the beast spear must go to prove that they are worthy of it. Only those who can leave the cave in one piece get the right to call themselves the masters of the beast spear. The beast mode, Wushio rushes towards the cave, slicing all the demons that come in his way, but the real Wushio is stuck inside him, tied and bound by hair. He has no control over his body and he feels bad for every innocent demon the spear's spirit is killing. However, when a woman and her baby come into their sight, Wushio shows that he can divert the trajectory of the beast to save them, and wasn't doing it earlier since he is a racist. Wushio strains himself to not lose his consciousness, and then he starts seeing visions of the maker of the beast spear. The man who made it was no less than a beast as he pounded the metal till his fists wallowed as he breathed fire to melt the metal. He tells Ushio that, like all others before him, he will lose his soul to the spear and become a true beast, whose sole goal will be to destroy Hakuman. Ushio asks the man who he is and why he hates Hakuman so much, but the man doesn't remember those details. He has forgotten everything in the last 2,000 years and all that remains is his undying hatred for the demon. In another place, the Association of Demon Hunters learns about the beast spirit taking control of Ushio. A woman named Ji Mai who is the founder of Demon Hunters, appears before the association and tells them that the only way to turn Ushio back to normal is by using the Kong she has passed down to her descendants, which currently is in Ushio's possession. Jimei goes into Nick Fury mode and assembles the Avengers to save Ushio. Her party includes all the girls whose lives have been raised by Ushio, including Yu, Saya, Reiko, Ino, and Naka. She tells them all to go to Hokkaido to calm Ushio's hair and she vanishes, the girls reach the airport where Ushio's dad is waiting for them with a helicopter to take them to Hokkaido. Their team unites with Satoru and Gang around a place called Kamikoten, where Ushio is headed. Suddenly, a huge army of leech demons fly towards them to destroy Ushio and the beast's spear. Ushio's dad tasks all the men to put up barriers to keep the leeches away and then asks Jun and Hinoa to guard the harem Avengers. While the girls do girly things and spend half an hour in intros, Tora and Azuna fly towards the beast mode Yushio and Azuna manages to steal the comb from Ushio's glowing ass. At the bridge, Yu gets into a fight with Naka about who takes the first position in the harem, but then Tora reaches the girls to warn them that Ushio is coming, and they are horrified by how ugly and ferocious he has become. Izuna has the comb and she asks the girls to line up. Reiko decides to go first since she is not afraid of the beast's spear, as she was stabbed by it earlier as well. Izuna tosses the cone to her, and she runs towards Ushio, recalling how he made her want to live. The beast shoves her aside, but she is able to pass the hair removal comb through his hair once and take out a big chunk of it. Reiko asks the girls who wants to be next, but Ushio is dangerously close to them. They try to get out of his way, but Saya trips, and to protect her, Naka headbutts the beast. She saves Saya, but the beast runs away after slapping her. Tora follows the beast mode Ushio and yanks out his hair, telling him that he has been naughty and will be punished by daddy, but the beast drives the spear through his chest and escapes. Hinawa comes in front of him suddenly and uses her barrier to press the beast down. Saya decides that it is her chance to calm Ushio's hair now, since no one but a woman from the white-haired clan can get past Hinawa's barrier. Saya pushes into the barrier that would deep fry any other human instantly, and she thinks about how Wushio gave her strength and courage and calms out another chunk of his hair. The control of the beast spear loosens on Ushio, but it uses all its power to blow away the barrier. He turns around and sees Saya passing the comb to Ino, and he tries to attack her to destroy the calm. Suddenly, he is Pikachu by Tora, who claims that Ino is still his prey and he won't let anyone take her. He picks up Ino and Saya telling them that he will help them until Ushio becomes edible again. The beast tries to attack Hinoa, who does not have enough energy to cast another barrier on him, but Jun saves her by pressing him down. Yu decides to go next. She states that the bridge on which Ushio is standing can crumble at any moment, and she trusts her speed to reach him and calm his hair before that, because she's faster than even the trans women athletes in her area. Yu gets on the bridge and takes a crouching start, and then dashes towards Ushio at full speed as the bridge crumbles under her feet. Hinoa and Jun remove the barrier just as Yu reaches Ushio, and she leaps right past him, coming off his hair. The bridge collapses at the same moment, but luckily, everyone is safe and even Ushio partially reverts to his human form for a moment. He flees into the forest as the girls get confident with the I can fix him attitude. 
However, Toro wonders if he should give up on getting Ushio back to normal and have a happy meal with the five girls in front of him. He sees Ino trying to cross the river, but she is clumsy as heck and struggles with every step. Toro picks her up and brings her to safety because he does not like washing his food before eating. As he is lecturing her, Naka thanks him for saving her earlier and Ino chimes in saying that Toro saved her too. She clings to him saying that he's a nice guy and will help them again, and the poor demon has no power over the innocent girls. Ino decides to go next but no one has any idea where Ushio is headed. Just then, Jimei appears in front of them and tells them to follow her. Tora carries all the girls as Jimei tells them that Ushio is going to a cave just in front of them because the spirit of the beast spear scents the traces of its mortal enemy Hakuman in the cave. The group lands on the aesthetic field in front of the cave and the ring of the beast spear indicates Ushio's direction. Ino runs towards the sound and Tora follows her, thinking that he can at least eat her if he acts in time. However, his plans are foiled as he sees Ushio in front of them and he puts all his hopes on Ino succeeding. The beast charges at them, telling them not to stand in between him and Hakuman. Tora shoots his thunderbolt at him, but the beast reflects that attack using the spear and Pikachu's him instead. He attacks the unguarded Ino after that, but she uses the cone to block the attack and gets flung over the cliff. Naka runs to her and finds her hanging onto the cliff. She asks her to use both her hands, but Ino does not want to lose the precious comb, even though she put it in front of the deadliest weapon known to man just now. Her grip loosens and she falls, but Tora comes in clutch once again and saves her. He flies up and taunts Beast Moon Ushio to make him attack them. Instead of dodging his attacks, he takes the spear into his body and restrains Ushio, telling him that he is supposed to be a dirty, sneaky, and pitiful human, and his trying to be a beast is offensive to other demons. Using this chance, Ino calms off his hair and tosses the cone to Naka for the last round. Taka saves Ino again and the beast slowly starts to loosen its grip on Ushio even more. However, the men could only last for so long while trying to keep the leeches at bay, and they have removed their barriers. The leeches flood the area as they come for Ushio, but they stop outside the cave's territory because of powerful talismans placed all around the cave. Hugh makes a wild card entry, saying that they have only three minutes before the talismans stop working, and if Naka cannot calm Ushio's hair by then, it is over for them. Ushio, who is in pain because of the spirit of the beast spear, finds his body vanishing and the maker of the spear declares that his spirit is being consumed by the spear and he has no way to return to normal. Just then, Jimei appears inside Oshio's psyche and calls the spear maker, her elder brother, and asks him to stop using the souls of others to achieve revenge against Hakuman. The man stops pounding on his spear and falls speechless, and Oshio briefly gives control of his body back. Naka walks towards him, showering him with all the typical sundier insults while crying, but then she says that she prefers him like he is and calms his hair as she asks him to return to her. She thinks she has succeeded, but then the beast spear's spirit overtakes Ushio once more and he starts sprouting black tentacles from his arms as he rushes at Hakuman's presence inside the cave. Naka cannot leave him alone and clings to him and they both fall down a cliff. What a stupid pair. She recalls how he always used to tease her about being tomboyish when they were little, but when others tried to bully her, he always came through and saved her. That made Naka fall for Ushio, and she finally confesses her feelings for him. The power of love triumphs all and suddenly the spirit of the beast has no hold over Ushio anymore. They crash to the ground just as he returns to his senses and at the same time, your barriers break and the leeches come flooding in. Everyone thinks they are doomed but the revived Ushio comes to save the day and with one powerful strike of his spear he blasts away the leeches. Tora is the happiest person right now and as Ushio lays Naka down, he tells him to come and fight alongside him. So the Chad Ushio and his oversized, aggressive Pikachu tear through the hordes of leeches, which honestly remind me of something in human reproductive biology. Tora finds that Ushio has grown even stronger than ever after returning to his senses, but Ushio bonks him on the head, telling him to pay attention to the fight. Tora starts laughing because he likes getting spanked by Ushio, and then burns a large number of leeches with his fire breath. Ushio asks him to create a lightning bolt as big as he can and send it towards the beast spear. Their combo attack works, and the lightning bolts pop all the leeches in an instant. Tora descends to the ground with the burned-out Ushio on his back, who wakes up soon and asks what is happening since he has no memories ever since he started transforming. He still remembers meeting the Spear Maker and Jimei after getting sucked into the spear, but he also has a vague recollection of all the girls who put their hearts into saving him, making them all emotional. Ushio's dad and the other priests also come to them just then, and they think that everything is over. However, Wushio has one last thing to do and he walks towards the cave to honor the wishes of the beast spear. 
Tora tells him that he is on 1% of his battery right now, but Ushio does not listen to him, so Tora decides to accompany him. Izuna asks the girls to stop the two idiots, but they are certain that a man must fight his battles with his bros sometimes. Naka tells everyone that they have fulfilled their mission by turning Ushio into a human again, and they should just go home and have a girls' night out while they wait for him to return from the cave. The girls agree with her plan and leave the action site, while Ushio and Tora march into the cave. The tunnel gets broader as they reach deeper into it, and at the end, they see a temple. Ushio is surprised to see a temple here, and then suddenly, his spear rings and transforms into his chad form. The spear tugs him ahead, and Goshio follows the direction in which it is pointing and arrives at a large hall with candles lit inside its perimeter. On the wall in front of them is a part of Hakuman, the source of intense demonic energy that makes Ushio weak in the knees. Ushio approaches the source, which attacks him with tentacles suddenly, and he blocks the attack using his spear. Ushio clings to Tora because the part is not entirely dead even after being separated, but then they sense the presence of another demon behind them. Tora attacks it with fire, but the attack is reflected back at him as a mysterious voice says that it has been waiting for the wielder of the beast spear to come here for ages. A portal opens up, and a time-traveling demon with split personality called Tokusaka comes out of it, offering to tell Ushio the truth behind the spear. Ushio is interested, and Takasaka starts the story. 850 years ago, the war between Hakumen and other demons took place and humans also joined the side of the demons. Hakumen eventually realized that she must retreat now, so she fled, dropping parts of her body in different locations in a hurry. Most of those parts were destroyed by other demons, but the largest parts still existed in front of them. Ushio asks why the humans and demons failed to finish off Hakumen as she was running, and Takisaka reveals that it was because they did not possess the beast spear at that time. The two key figures on the human side decided to not pursue the spear and instead wait for it at the cave because they were sure it would come towards the energy of Hakumen. The woman Yuki, who was the reincarnation of Ji Mei, volunteered to guard the part all her life and dragged her successors into it too. Ushio remembers that he met Ji Mai inside the spear, but his pea-sized brain cannot understand what the story means. Takizaka tells him that it is best to see things with his own eyes, and he uses his power of traveling through time and takes Ushio and Toro with him. They pass through the time vortex and end up in the Chinese capital of 2200 years ago. The beast spear vanishes from Ushio's hands, and Takizaka explains the rules of time travel and says that the spear vanished because it had not been created yet. He then tells Ushio that he will be back to pick him up when the history lesson is over and returns to the present. Ushio and Tora freefall and land on their heads, and as they quarrel about why Tora did not fly, a girl comes in front of them. Ushio is stunned to see the girl who looks exactly like Ino, but he realizes that she is Jimai. He tries to communicate with her and finds that because of Tokusaka's ability, there is no language barrier between them. Jimai cannot see Tora and she gets friendly with Ushio, thinking he is just an ordinary human. Tora feels multiple signs of demonic energy all around the area, but there is a presence in the building next to them that feels even worse. He warns Ushio about the demons when suddenly, they arrive out of the ground and attack a bunch of merchants coming to the town. Ushio grabs Jimi's hand and runs to safety, but the strange earthworm scorpion hybrid demons are after him too. Tora protects Ushio from one of the demons, but he is careless and lets the second demon attack him. Lucio rushes to action and bonks the demon with a huge stone, but that has no effect. Luckily, Tor gets enough time to electrocute the demon, and then he starts quarreling with Ushio about who saved whom. Jimai is confused to see Ushio talking to thin air, and she thinks he is mad because schizophrenia wasn't invented back then. However, she believes he is a powerful sage who can defeat demons easily and drags him to her house. Jimai's mother thanks Ushio for saving her daughter, and then says that if the demons are acting up again, it means Hakuman has returned. She tells the story of the cowardly king who lost his mind when he saw a glimpse of Hakuman in a woman's form and started thinking of ways to stop the demon. He declared to all the blacksmiths in China that whoever creates a weapon strong enough to kill Hakuman will be made a billionaire instantly. Ji Mei's father, who is an expert at crafting divine weapons, was also trying his best to make a spear, and she thinks he will definitely succeed. Wu Xiu likes the cheerful and happy atmosphere of their family. That reminds him of his happy gaze too. Ji Mai then tells Ushio that her elder brother Jiryu will also return home today from a workshop on making powerful swords. Ushio pictures the madman crafting the spear, but as he sees Jiryu, he finds him to be a perfectly calm and rational human. Jiryu tells his father that Hakuman is in their country because, a few months ago, a comet with nine tails landed in the capital. The father and son don't waste a single moment and get to making a divine weapon to kill Hakuman. They work all night, and in the morning, 
Wushio talks with Ji Mei, hoping that the beast spear is ready. Just then, Ji Mei's father and brother come out of the workshop with a cracked and malformed spear. The old man falls to his knees, saying that no matter how hard they worked, the spear was not taking shape like they wanted it to. However, Yuri tells him that he has learned how to craft powerful weapons with dark arts. Before he can even explain, his mother comes there and chops off her long hair because Giryu apparently needs them to craft the weapon. Giryu's father also does not hesitate to use such a shady method and Ushio feels that the entire family needs to see a good psychologist. For the next four days and nights, Giryu and his father pound the hot metal non-stop, stabilizing it with the power of the woman's hair. They finally finish a divine weapon they believe is strong enough to destroy Hakuman and take it to the king. However, the line of swordsmiths at the palace is longer than the line outside Starbucks. Wishio is hopeful that their sword will be selected, but he notices that Tor has been on his edge the entire time. The king is still delirious and asks everyone to present their weapons to destroy Hakuman, but he does not know that his plans are going to fail. Hakuman, who is disguising itself as a woman, was initially planning to destroy the country by driving the king to madness, but now that he was thinking about retaliation, she has no choice but to intervene. Hakuman uses her powers to gain control of the king's consorts, and they start shaking creepily before getting deleted from existence, turning into the nine white tails of Hakuman and reuniting with their master. Hakuman stares at the king and his guards come to protect his life and even the swordsmiths hope to join the fight and kill the demon with their weapons. However, Hakuman transforms into a nine-tailed fox and tells them that such puny weapons will have no effect on her. The Grand Massacre starts with Hakuman first ripping apart the soldiers and then rushing towards the swordsmiths. Jimei's father charges at the demon too, but like everyone else, his sword also shatters, and he gets ratioed instantly. His family screams, but Lushio is gripped by overwhelming terror, and he can do nothing but sweat. Hakuman tells the remaining humans to be driven to madness because of fear and uses a powerful fire breath at them. Tora tries to counter it but fails, and Ushio lunges at Jimei's family to save them from the attack. Unfortunately, he cannot save Jimei's mother, who gets caught in a fire and loses her life. Lushio is traumatized and rushes at Hakuman with a spear, but the demon's terrifying gaze freezes him in his tracks. Hakuman calls Ushio a snot-nosed brat and claims that anyone who dares to stand up to her is sent to the pits of despair. Hakuman uses her flame breath to burn down Ushio, who cannot move a single muscle because of despair, but Tor counters it with his fire breath just in time. Their attacks collide and explode, setting the castle on fire, and then Hakuman takes to the sky, bombing the shit out of the city. She flies off after setting everything on fire, and Oshio is left devastated with the guilt that he couldn't save anyone. He goes back to Ji Mei's house and questions if he is even worthy of wielding the beast's spear. Ji Mei comes back to her senses, and she realizes that her parents died from Hakuman's attacks. Oshio tries to apologize, but she knows there was nothing he could do. He goes outside to cry alone, then hears the strange voices coming from the workshop. He rushes inside the workshop and finds Giryu pounding a block of metal with his bloody fists. Lucio stops him, but Giryu pushes him back, saying that he wants to destroy his hands that could not create a blade strong enough to face Hakuman. Lucio stops him and assures Giryu that he will be the one who creates the weapon to destroy Hakuman, so he cannot destroy his hands too quickly. Giryu is moved by those words. But then another kind of horror grips his heart as he tells Ushio that there is only one way to create a truly strong weapon, and for that, he needs to sacrifice someone dear to him. Ushio is horrified, and Jiryu clarifies that he will not sacrifice Jimai at any cost, even if he can never avenge his parents. However, Jimai has heard all this, and she enters the workshop and stands on top of the furnace, telling her brother that she also wishes to avenge her parents. She asks Jiryu to craft a magnificent weapon that can destroy Hakuman to honor her sacrifice. Yuryu and Amashio beg her not to do anything rash, but Jimai has made up her mind and jumps into the furnace. Jiryu and Ushio both try to save her, but none of them makes it in time and they are left heartbroken as Jimai falls into the fire pit. Yuryu is devastated for a while, but then he gets up and declares that he will not let his sister's sacrifice go in vain. He cries tears of blood as he begins pounding on the spearhead he is preparing, pouring his rage, pain, and hatred into the metal with each strike. He remembers the death of his parents and his sister's sacrifice and literally loses himself in crafting the blade. Ushio and Tora are stunned to see Giryu's body melting and fusing with the weapon he is creating. Giryu declares that he has turned into a demon who is filled only with the desire to kill Hakuman, so he will transform his body into the shaft of his spear. He believes that Ushio is a strong and kind person, and he wishes to fight alongside him as his weapon someday. With a final strike, Giryu assimilates his being into the spear. 
The spear then rises on its own, and Jiryu speaks from it as he engraves Oshio's name on its tang, claiming that he has been a witness to the creation of the beast's spear. Toru feels weird around the spear and a memory he has forgotten almost returns to him. However, he wants to destroy the beast's spear right now so that he is never imprisoned and can live freely. He pounces at the spear, but it breaks through the roof and flies off to chase its enemy. Suddenly, a bright light shines and Jimei appears in her astral form before Oshio and Tora, revealing that after sacrificing her life, she has realized her true purpose and potential. Before she can tell Oshio about her purpose, Takisuka comes to take them back to the present. He uses his power to take everyone through the events that happened after Jiryu became the Beast Spear. He searched for Hakumen all over China. But since he did not find the demon, he killed the other demons indiscriminately. The demons gather together and wage a long war against the Beast Spear ultimately capturing it and using their lives to turn it into a red cloth to seal it away. The spear stayed sealed there for many centuries, until it was eventually freed by its first user. In the meantime, Jimmy's spirit lived for Hakuman, hoping to help her brother defeat it. She found that Hakuman was in Japan, so she reincarnated as Yuki, and fought in the war against Hakuman. Hakuman ran after sensing defeat, and Jimai followed to strike her down for good. However, she could not believe it when she found that Hakuman had inserted itself in between the pillars supporting the mainland of Japan. The demon blackmailed Ji Mei, saying that if she is threatened, she will run away by destroying the pillars and all of Japan will sink to the bottom of the ocean. Ji Mei had no choice but to betray the demons she was fighting alongside and purge them before they could kill Hakuman. She sealed Hakuman in the pillars so that she could not leave. For the longest time, Ji Mei guarded the seal in Yuki's form, but then the body grew older and lost its spiritual power. Ji Mei escaped that body and found a woman called Mikado to be her successor who will act as the Sinkus to keep Hakuman sealed. After Mikado also grew old, Jimai found her current successor Sumiko, Oshio's mother who has been keeping the seal in place for hundreds of years at the bottom of the sea. Tora finds the plot holes in the story and asks how Ushio could have been born if his mom had never left the sea. Jimai explains that one day, Sumiko told her about a dream in which she was a happily married woman and gave birth to his son, who grew up to be a strong and brave man capable of wielding the beast's spear. Shigmai realized that Sumiko's son was destined to use the Beast Spear and kill Hakuman, so she allowed her to enter the outside world for two years. In that brief period, Sumiko got married and gave birth to Ushio. With the story completed, Takasaka brings them all back to the present. He tells Ushio that the next time they meet, it will be the final battle, and tells him to enjoy his life until then. Shigmai says the same and tells Ushio to be his best self to win this battle. She vanishes with Takasaka and Tora asks Ushio what he plans to do now. Ushio knows he cannot turn back, but he is still terrified of Hakuman. However, as the beast spear manifests itself in front of Ushio, he decides to honor Jiryu and Jimei's wishes. He grabs his spear, determined to defeat Hakuman. Ushio returns to his school life soon, and for the first time, he appreciates how peaceful and carefree everyone is. Later, as he walks back to his home along with Inno and Naka quarreling with Naka over the silliest of things, he spots a boy looking at two ants prancing around a small pit. The boy is so lost in observing the ants that he doesn't notice Truck Kun coming his way, but Ushio saves the boy from being Ishikade at the last moment. However, he steps on the two ants and crushes them without even realizing it. The boy knows Ushio, and claims that he is always doing the same thing, which is crushing innocent creatures without even realizing it. Ushio goes home after that, only to find that his dad has left on another milk run and has not even prepared lunch for him before going. Yushio is frustrated, but then he starts to think about the weird kid whom he met earlier and wonders how he knew his name. Tora says that the boy gave a strange vibe like the beast's spear. Suddenly, pixie dust starts falling on Ushio's hand, and before he can realize what is going on, he is attacked by sharp spikes erupting from the floor. Ushio and Tora rush outside, and they find the creepy boy there, carrying a big-ass death scythe and a big demonic bird perched on his shoulder. The boy introduces himself as Kirio, a successor of the Beast Spear, and claims that he is here to take the Beast Spear, and the responsibility of destroying Hakuman from Ushio, who is not fit for the job. He claims that his Elzar scythe and companion Kuin are much stronger than Ushio and his pet dog. Tora gets furious on hearing this, and he shoots his thunderbolt at Kuin, who deflects it using his special ability called Gold Mist. Tora gets close to the crow demon and punches him, but misses and gets handed a big fat L instead. Just then, Ushio's dad arrives with his helicopter. He is injured and tells Ushio that right now, their temple is under attack by Hakuman's avatar, and they need the beast spear's power to defeat it. Kirio knows Ushio's dad and he asks him to take him along too. They get in the helicopter. 
where the old man claims that all the priests in the temple are no match for Hakuman's avatar, and Ushio is confident that he can help with that. Kirio is not impressed and says that all they need are lots of Elzar's Sightus to deal with any demons. In the meantime, the priests at the temple are fighting an uphill battle against Hakuman's avatar, which is a furry centipede. They combine their powers and chant a sealing spell, restraining the avatar. Just then, Wushio and his dad arrive at the battlefield, and the chief priest tells him to visit Lady Mikado inside the temple. Ushio's dad takes Ushio inside, informing him that Lady Mikado is his mother's ancestor, and that meeting her right now will be the best thing for him. Ushio hesitates at the door since he is not feeling like meeting anyone, but his dad pushes him inside and closes the door. There, Ushio finds the old woman and feels like he has a deep connection with her. Lady Mikado bonds with Ushio quickly, and seeing him goof around reminds her of the time when she was a happy and fulfilled mother. Jimag recruited her to watch over Hakuman's seal, and she left her family behind to take on this noble task and became a saintess. However, as she sees the kind and cheerful Ushio, who wields the beast spear, she is glad that her sacrifice paid off. Soon, the ground starts to rumble and Ushio realizes that he must go out to join the battle now. Outside, Hakuman's avatar is trying to break free from the confinement and Satoru and others try to strike it, but their attacks get reflected. Ushio rushes outside and transforms into his Chad form to attack Hakuman's clone, but his attacks also get repelled and the clone decides to counterattack since there is no one who can defeat her now. She reflects the sealing spell onto the priests who cast it and then attacks them. Ushio stands in front of them to defend everyone, but he is also useless, and Hakuman's attack is stopped by Lady Mikado's barrier. She greets Hakuman as an old friend, since she spent 300 years looking after her, and the clone returns the greeting by attacking her with sharp tentacles. The tentacles gradually pierce the barrier, but Lady Mikado claims that a mere clone of Hakuman cannot defeat her, even though she is almost at death's door. She unleashes all her energy to destroy the tentacles, and then attacks the clone with a petrifying beam. The clone turns to stone and everyone is freed, but the Lady Mikado falls to the floor because she used all her energy to fight it. Wushio tries to wake her up and cries, telling Lady Mikado that if he had been stronger, she wouldn't have to sacrifice herself, but she replies that it was always supposed to be this way. She consoles Ushio, telling him that his path ahead will be a hard one, and that his power will not be enough to defeat Hakuman. She requests everyone to work with him to defeat the ultimate evil, and then dies. Her soul leaves her body and flies off to heaven with Jimai. While everyone is busy mourning Lady Mikado, Kirio jumps into the fight and slices the stone Hakuman into bits to steal the old woman's kill. He wants everyone to acknowledge him as the one who killed Hakuman's clone, but they call him a kill stealer. He is upset at them and claims that they don't need the beast spear anymore because his mom told him so. Kirio remembers his mom who is so scary that Voldemort had a heart attack on seeing her, but she always treated him kindly. She spoiled him and conditioned him into believing that the beast spear is useless and must be destroyed. A few days have passed since then and Mushio is still in depression as he keeps blaming himself for Lady Mikado's death. Tora feels that Ushio is at his weakest right now, which makes it the perfect time for him to kill him. He attacks Ushio, who tells him that it is not the right time for this, but Tora slashes his shoulder as he says that demons don't wait for humans to finish crying before they eat them. Ushio transforms using the spear's power and attacks Tora, who uses his fire breath on him while remarking that he is so pitiful and weak that he couldn't even save an old woman. Ushio understands that, and he charges forward, claiming that he wants to grow stronger. His spear manages to reach Tora, who blocks it with his hand because the attack had zero power behind it. Ushio is furious because of his insults and drops the spear to punch him with brute strength. Tora tells him that even infants punch with more strength than this and flies away, telling Ushio that he won't even taste good when he is so weak. Ushio realizes that Tora wants him to get out of depression, and he feels the need to grow stronger as soon as possible. Soon after that, he suddenly feels his body being pressed down by an overwhelming force and finds Kirio and many priests trying to bind him. Kirio explains that he has been trying to convince everyone how useless the beast spear is, but the higher-ups don't understand him yet. That is why he wants to destroy the spear and leave them no choice but to adopt the more modern weapons like his scythes. The priests with him also say that they have seen that the beast spear was useless against just a clone of Hakuman, so they support Kirio's ideology. As Kirio is about to take the spear from Ushio's hands, Ushio shows why he is someone to not be messed with, even without the spear's power. He breaks the barrier with brute force and then fights the priests single-handedly. However, as Ushio is busy holding the priests off, Kirio takes out the red cloth that has the power from his pocket and throws it towards the spear, sealing its power. Ushio feels the spear becoming heavy, and he cannot hold it as Kirio pulls it away. 
He remarks that his mom gave him the red cloth that could seal the powers of the spear completely. And now that he has the spear, all that is left is to destroy it. Ushio rushes towards Kirio, but the priests trap him in a barrier and send him crashing into the trees before leaving. Ushio stays stuck in that place the entire day, and then Hinoa comes there to break him free using her comms. They rush to the temple immediately, while Akiba and Tora are a few minutes late in reaching their location and see the signs of a battle between Oshio and the priests. Akiba realizes that the beast spear must have been stolen and he rides off with Tora to find it. Meanwhile, Oshio and Hinoa reach the temple and inform the head priest that Kirio has stolen the beast spear and wishes to destroy it. Oshio requests that the head priest help him retrieve the spear because it is very important to him. The head priest tells Oshio and Hinoa the story of a former priest, Inasa, who researched divine weapons and created many remarkable weapons that are still used today. However, he soon went off the rails and started fantasizing about a divine weapon stronger than even the beast's spear. Inasa broke the taboos of the temple and used Western technology and magic to create divine weapons, and he was exiled. However, he returned to the temple just two years ago with the young Kirio and the giant Scythe. Impressed by the boy's tremendous spiritual power, the priests hurriedly made him a candidate to be the Beast Spear's successor. But that was a grave mistake as it gave Inasa's ideology more followers. Lucio wants to know where Inasa is because he believes that Kirio and the Spear will be there too. Meanwhile, Akiba has already led Tora to Inasa's home because he suspects Kirio of hiding here. Tora is more interested in finishing his fight with Kuin, but as soon as they enter the abandoned house, they find new opponents waiting for them. Ekiba explains that the weird monsters who look like they escaped the Jujutsu Kaisen universe are synthetic monsters called homunculus that are created by mixing magic and chemistry. Akiba knows a great deal about these artificial monsters, who constantly whisper that they are jealous of humans. Tora doesn't care about their backstory and rushes ahead, tearing through them effortlessly. Akiba fully supports him, and they take down all the monsters in their way until they come to a storeroom full of Elzer Sidus. They inspect the sites and Tora remarks that humans have grown remarkably dumber in the 500 years he was imprisoned. He shatters the spears while saying that these fragile toys won't even harm him and only idiots could compare them to the beast spear. Akiba agrees, but he remarks that Kirio's scythe was much more powerful than these, and he wonders what the secret is behind its energy. He spots a door hidden behind the wallpaper and to break it open, he taunts Tora by kissing him. Tora furiously punches him and Akiba dodges to let him break the wall which leads them to a secret room. There they see a mummified corpse of priest Inasa and his notes in which he curses a woman. Just then, a mechanical golem awakens and starts moving towards Akiba and Tora. On the other hand, Ushio and Hinoa also make their way into the mansion by skydiving without a parachute. Hinoa deals with the monsters using her comms, and Ushio looks around the house, realizing that it seems like a pediatric ward. Hinoa finds Inasa's diary, in which he writes about his experiments in creating powerful weapons. Inasa succeeded in creating the ultimate synthetic organism, the homunculus cumin, but it did not satisfy him. Inasa's true goal was to create the scythes and something called the materia. One day, he met a weird woman by the name of Tawako who told him about her research into Western sorcery. Tawako offered to help Inasa and together, they created the first Elzar scythe. Inasa was really impressed by its performance and Tawako earned his trust and monopolized the scythe manufacturing process. She claimed to be afraid of Hakuman and believed that the beast spear was not enough to destroy the demon. She manipulated Inasa into thinking that the spear was useless and told him about the red cloth that could seal its powers. She wanted him to steal the spear so that they could throw it into boiling lead and destroy it forever. Bushio and Hinoa panic as they learn this and they rush to find the spear, but the wall in front of them suddenly breaks down and they find Akiba and Tora fighting a golem. Bushio wants to rush inside at any cost, but the golem attacks him, and while Akiba and Hinoa get caught in the blast, Tora saves him at the last moment. Akiba and Hinoa stop the golem at their barrier and Hinoa tosses the diary to Ushio so that he can find ways to escape this situation. He learns that Materia was the codename for the perfect human, born solely for the purpose of using holy weapons. Inasa did many experiments to make one but failed, but one day, Tawako approached him with a baby she grabbed out of trash, and she made him into the Materia. At this point, even Inasa started getting afraid of the crazy woman, but he continued with the research. In just a year, the infant was developed into a materia, and Inasa named him Kirio. Inasa realized that he had made the biggest mistake of his life by trusting Tawako, because her eyes showed him something darker and more sinister than he had ever imagined. He was frightened, and that was the last thing he ever wrote in his diary. Oshio wants to help the Kiba and Hinoa to fight the golem, 
But they tell him he is useless without the spear. They are also not going to last much longer because their legs have taken serious damage in the last attack, and they ask Bushio to save the spear, as it is more important right now. Bushio rushes to save the spear along with Tora, who is a total sundeer, and says that he is not coming with Ushio because he is worried about him. However, Kuin is already waiting for them as he guards the way to Kirio. Ushio rushes in with a brick, but Kuin slaps him away with his antennas and then asks Tora to stop following such a weak and stupid human. Tora is furious because someone else insulted his human, and he attacks Kuin with his fire breath. Kuin counters it with his ice attack, and, as Tora wonders why he is getting angry after seeing Ushio insulted, Kuin pierces him with his sharp tentacles. Ushio rushes to save Tora, but Kuin opens fire on him and knocks him away, saying that he is too weak to save anyone. Ushio does not give up and tries to free Tora from the tentacles using the brick. Tora tells him to stop as he does not want to be indebted to a human, but Ushio replies that he is only paying back the debt for all the times Tora has saved his life. Kuin insults the stupid duo and attacks Ushio with his tentacles, but Tora cannot let his human be harmed, and he breaks free of Kuin's grip and blocks the attack. He charges at Kuin and goes Gomu Gomu Gatling on him, while asking him if his dear Kirio is brave enough to risk his life to save a friend or to fight against an insane opponent alone. Kuin replies that Kirio will never make such stupid or emotion-based decisions, and Tora replies that it means he is not stronger than Ushio. He grabs Kuin's arms and cracks them before headbutting him and denting his armor. Tora declares that he feels furious whenever Kuin tries to insult Ushio and he won't tolerate it anymore. The two monsters keep on punching each other and Tora tells Ushio to go and save the spear, while he keeps Kuin busy. Ushio enters the room where Kirio is arranged to destroy the spear, by tying it with a red cloth and keeping it suspended over a pit of molten lead. He claims that he was just waiting for Ushio to start the show. The other priests also have the sight as now, and they claim that there is no need for the beast's spear anymore. Ushio charges at Kirio to stop him, but Kirio uses an invisible force punch to cast him to the ground. Suddenly, Tuwako, the crazy woman, starts playing a creepy tune on the violin and says they will send the beast's spear off with this. Kirio rushes to her, eager to get her praise because he thinks she is his mother. Ushio knows that Kirio has no mother, and he realizes that the woman in front of them is the one whom Inasa mentioned in his diary, and she is responsible for all this. Tawako uses her power and the red cloth holding the beast's spear is ripped apart. The spear falls into the molten lead pit and Ushio runs to save it, thinking of Jimmy's sacrifice. He climbs on the pit and calls for the spear to return to him, but it is of no use as the spear has been deleted from existence. With their mission accomplished, the priests ask Kirio about the strange woman and he introduces her as his mom, who taught him about the method to destroy the beast's spear. The priests have never heard of any woman involved in Inasa's story and Ushio's dad makes a sudden appearance to tell them that she is the culprit behind all this. He gets up, preparing a surprise attack on Tawako as he tells everyone that she is one of Hakuman's minions who trick Inasa into doing horrible experiments and destroying the beast's spear. He suddenly throws a wheel at her, and Tawako transforms into her real form as she catches it with her teeth and shoots Ushio's dad at the same time. Kiria was worried about his mom, but then he sees that her real identity is that of a monster. Ushio realizes that the woman is dangerous, but it is too late, and she starts a rampage, destroying the useless scythes and mowing down the priests who are wielding them. Kirio is devastated as he learns that his mom is an ugly monster who never loved him and only manipulated him to destroy the beast's spear. He cries, but she slaps him away instantly. Wushio wants to save everyone, and he keeps on calling for the spear to come to him, but the woman appears behind him and slaps him into the lead tank too, which has luckily cooled down and frozen. Ushio cries, declaring that it is all his fault for being so weak, but then he hears Giryu's voice asking if he will fight alongside him once again. Ushio is horrified as the metal turns red and the shape of Giryu's face appears on it, and he asks him if he is willing to fight this battle, even if it means losing his soul. Ushio starts speaking some sad stuff about how being strong equals being sad and lonely, but Giryu ain't got time for his bullshit and tells him to scream his heart out if he wants to get the spear back. As Ushio screams for the spear, its energy radiates from the lead pit and turns him into a chat again. He calls for the spear to come to him, but Tawako stabs him through the shoulder and pulls him out. Ushio is determined to not lose to her and prevent any more deaths at the hands of Hakuman. He pleads for the spear to come to him so they can finish their battle, and the lead pit cracks as the spear comes flying to him and rips away the monster's tail. Ushio becomes a chat again, and he rushes at Tawakato and stabs her. She is backed into a corner and calls her golem to aid because it is holding Hinoe and Akiba hostage. 
Wishio falters on seeing them captured and then tells him to off himself if he wants to save their lives. Hinoa and Akiba do not want that, and they tell Oshio to erase the letters on the golem's head to finish it before dealing with a the woman. They begin chanting a self-destruct spell to avoid staying hostages, but Oshio does not want them to die, and he tells Tawako that she can kill him if she wants. He points his spear away from her, and she commands her golem to attack him. However, Oshio has been gathering energy in the spear too, and he tears through the golem's laser beam before rushing at it and blowing off its head with the round end of his spear's shaft. Akiba and Hinoa are saved while Tawako is seriously injured because of the blast. Realizing she cannot win against Oshio, she tries playing the victim card and asks Kirio to save her, turning back into her human form and apologizing for hurting him earlier. Apparently the hit earlier damaged Kirio's brain for good, and he trusts the monster woman and attacks Oshio to save her. Tawako tries to fly away but Oshio's dad has put a barrier around the house that prevents her from leaving it. While Ushio tells Kirio that the woman isn't his mother, Tawako surrounds the priests in a fire circle, hoping to burn them all to death. Kirio realizes that he was tricked by her and decides to make amends by stabbing her. Tawako dies and her body bursts into flames but Kirio has completely lost his mind and he swings his scythe around randomly, blaming everyone for his mother's death. Ushio stops him but Kirio is still crying about how his life is meaningless without his mother. Ushio slaps the shit out of him before telling him to get a grip. He claims that Kirio is stronger and smarter than him, and he can still live and atone for all the sins he has committed. Lucio says that Lady Mikado told him that he needs many strong friends to defeat Hakuman and he wants Kirio to become his ally too. Kirio gets some of his sanity back and he leaves with Kuin. Lushio's dad says that the boy has gone through too much in a short span of time and he needs some alone time to sort out everything in his head. Later, Lushio claims that he has realized how strong Hakuman is going to be, but he is not going to chicken away and dedicate his all to growing strong enough to defeat him. Toro also goes back to him, declaring that Ushio has become worth eating again. Ushio and Toro continue fighting as soon as they get home, but Mecha comes there and breaks their fight with a gigantic metal bowl. She scolds Ushio as she tells him to come to school because she doesn't want him to repeat a grade because of his poor attendance. Toro thinks that Naka is one abnormal woman, but she notices him and then punishes him for wasting Ushio's time. Later, as Naka keeps on nagging Oshio to get along with Tora better as they go to school, three scientists are watching them from a security van and scanning them for their spiritual power levels. They find that their target alpha, Ushio, has a spiritual power level 1800, which is the value of an average human. They do not see Tora, the target beta, nearby and think that kidnapping Ushio and getting their hands on the beast spear will be easy in that case. As Yushio and Maka keep walking while flirting and quarreling, two brothers of truck Kun surround them from both sides and some men in black suits surround them. They try to kidnap them but Ushio fights back and takes them all down. The scientists are amazed to see his power without even activating the beast spear, and they grow even more curious to see his real abilities. Yushio tells Naka to go to his home and ask his dad for help while he deals with the kidnappers. However, as soon as Naka leaves, the kidnappers shoot Ushio with tranquilizers, and human beasts like him cannot remain conscious after that. Ushio wakes up in the van where he finds the three scientists who introduce themselves as the directors of the organization called the Hammer Institute, which works on analyzing monsters scientifically to create a weapon that can destroy Hakuman. The scientists believe that the beast spear has fought Hakuman before and some fragments of the demon's tissue can be stuck on it, which they want to cultivate to learn more about Hakuman. Meanwhile, the kidnappers also get Naka, but Tora comes to help her after hearing her cries. He throws away the man and asks Naka about Ushio, but just then, he is surrounded by trucks containing spiritual stun guns that press him down from all sides. The scientists explain to Ushio that they created the stun guns to disable the demons from moving, and they work on monsters as powerful as Tora too. Tora falls to the ground because of the stun guns and gets captured. The scientists also take Naka along to ensure that Ushio will not go berserk and cooperate fully with their experiments. However, Tora only allowed himself to get captured to get the location of Ushio, and he asks Naka to look for Ushio as he bids his time. He tells Naka to take one strand of his hair and tug on it as soon as she finds Ushio. As soon as they arrive at the research facility, Tora causes an explosion to create a distraction. He then creates a clone of Naka from his hair before freeing her and letting her escape. Naka runs through the facility and makes changes to her clothing to ease her moment. She stoots around till she finds a room where many monsters are being imprisoned and researched. She does not realize what is happening there until she meets a demon who looks like a boy. The boy is connected to machines and is terrified of Naka, but she still approaches him and offers him some chocolate to win his heart. 
The boy introduces himself as a European ghost called Baal and says that the scientists forcibly captured all the demons here to experiment on them. Naka is furious to hear this, so she frees Baal and takes him along to look for Ushio. Meanwhile, Ushio has been taken to the central lab, where the scientists analyze the beast's spear, and Ushio yells at them to stop. He tells them not to defile the sacrifice of Jimei and Jiryu, but he gets a big fat dose of ketamine that sends him back to sleep. After that, they sense a small tissue on the spear that has very high spiritual energy readings, and they decide to cultivate it, believing that it is a part of Hakuman. That turns out to be the biggest mistake of their lives as the tissue grows too rapidly and transforms into an independent monster within seconds. As the scientists force Ushio to fight a machine to test his true power, the spear starts raining upon sensing that Hakuman is nearby. Meanwhile, Naka is talking with Bao when Hakuman's lab-grown clone suddenly bursts through the wall next to them. Baal transforms into his demonic form to stop Hakuman from harming Naka, but the clone attacks him with its tentacles. A scientist comes running out of the next room just as the clone absorbs Baal, and Naka tells him that only Ushio can help them now. She rushes to Ushio's lab and tells him that Hakuman's clone has absorbed all the demons captured in the building and is heading towards them, and even the spiritual stun guns are useless on it. However, the scientists are happy to see that their experiment has produced results, and they feel they can study Hakuman now. On learning that the scientists are responsible for kidnapping Bal and other demons, Naka turns into Greta Thunberg and gives the scientists a how dare you speech. Just then, the clone breaks into the lab and attacks the scientists. Ushio saves them at the last moment, claiming that even though he hates them all, he does not want to see anyone die because of Hakuman anymore. As Ushio transforms into Chad mode, the scientists are stunned to see his spiritual power rise to 100,000. Ushio fights the clone and breaks it apart, but it repairs itself using the demons he had absorbed and uses their abilities to fight back. Ushio destroys all the demons, but as he is about to hit Ball, Naka tells him that he is a friend. She asks Ushio to save him, but the clone attacks her first and Ushio saves her before telling her that it might not be possible to fulfill her request. He rushes to finish the clone and Ball requests that Ushio kill him before he harms Naka. Ushio's heart softens on hearing this and he decides to save Bal. Naka goes to the scientists and asks them how they can separate Ball from Hakuman, but they say it's impossible. She asks them to do some science stuff and discover a solution, but then the clone sends Ushio crashing right next to them and traps them all under rubble. Naka sees that Ushio is not in the condition to fight and Hakuman's clone is getting closer to them. She remembers that she can call Tora for help, and with the help of the scientist Granny, she tugs on Tora's hair, who is getting bored in his room, and he rushes out to save her. Tora breaks through all the doors in his path and arrives at the lab in style, tossing Hakuman's clone aside and electrocuting it with a powerful thunderbolt. Tora then frees Naka from the rubble and teases Ushio, saying that he is pathetic without him. After that, he releases his energy to fight Hakuman's clones, and the scientists find that his spiritual power level is almost equal to that of Ushio. Tora wants to smash the monster to pieces, but Naka tells him about her friend Bao. Meanwhile, the scientists notice that gas pipeline has been damaged and poisonous gas is filling up the floor. They shamelessly decide to escape and tell Ushio and Naka that there is no way to save everyone here. They plan to lock down this building after they escape and blow it up to destroy Hakuman's clone. The scientists tell Ushio and Naka to join them while Tor is fighting the clone because they plan to destroy him along with the building. Ushio and Naka aren't having their bullshit logic, and they ask them if they will abandon their colleagues who are still stuck inside the building. Ushio says that they have no right to use and throw away other people's lives as they please and Naka asks them what they would do if their loved ones were caught up in the mess. Her words strike a chord in the geeky granny's heart, and she begins thinking about her family. Meanwhile, Tor has the upper hand in the battle, and he uses his thunderbolt to destroy the clone's leg. However, the clone uses the legs of the demons it has absorbed and becomes a hybrid spider. It pushes back Toro with a speed attack and Ushio gets ready to join the fight. He promises Naka that he will save her friend from the monster because the spear tells him to believe in his power. As Ushio and Toro fight Hakuman's clone, the scientists notice something and tell Naka that there is a way to save Bao. While their spiritual stun gun is ineffective on Hakuman, they believe that they may still be able to immobilize the leg's clone and use that chance to save Bao. The Geeky Granny tells Naka that the control room will also be filled with poison gas soon, and if she wants to save her friend, she must risk death. Naka is determined to see it to the end, and Granny leads her to the control room. Ushio and Tora have a clear disadvantage in the battle now, since the clone has learned they don't want to harm Baal, and it uses him as a meat shield. They realize that the clone is evolving faster than I chatbots, and soon it might become too strong to handle. 
Tora is getting irritated by the long-drawn fight and decides to finish with a strong Thunderbolt, but Hakuman's clone uses him as his power bank and absorbs all the power to launch a powerful attack. One of the attacks hits the scientist Granny, seriously wounding her back. She realizes that she might not make it, so she asks Naka to keep calm and follow her instructions. As Naka learns to operate the machines, Granny tells her that she also had a child once who lost his life to a terminal disease. She was a doctor at the time but could not save him, so she changed her career and started researching monsters instead. Naka feels bad for her, but then she sees that Hakuman's clone has put Ushio in a tight spot. Luckily, the stun guns are fully charged now and she shoots them at the clone, immobilizing its legs. She screams at Ushio to save Bao, and he cuts through the clone with great speed and precision to free the blue demon. However, the power runs out and the guns don't work anymore, but Ushio doesn't want to save any other demon stuck inside the clone either. Toru and Moshio go all out as they destroy the clone, dodging its attack and breaking it into small pieces. Giki Granny is amazed to see that their power grows beyond comparison when they work together, and she realizes that science may never be able to imitate that. The clone explodes and then Granny tells everyone to get out of the building as soon as possible. The poisonous gas has filled the room and even the clone's fragments are trying to put themselves together. Granny realizes that at this rate, the monster will come out even more powerful than before, and she sends a message to her fellow scientists, asking them to lock down the building and blow it up in 10 minutes. The countdown starts and Naka picks up the Yiki Granny to help her out, but she has lost too much blood and insists on being left here since she is not going to survive. She claims that she wants to spend her last moments as a scientist and gather data about Hakuman and asks Naka to leave without her. Naka runs away crying and meets Ushio and his group in the hallway. She loses consciousness because of the poison gas and Ushio follows suit. Tora is frustrated that the weaklings lost to a puny poison gas, but then he hears that only five minutes are left before the building explodes, so he carries them and rushes outside. Yiki Granny sends a final message to her colleagues containing the data about Hakuman, so that her sacrifice is not in vain, and they can create an anti-Hakuman weapon out of it. Meanwhile, Oshio's dad has arrived at the research facility along with the military to save his son and arrest the scientists. They do not resist and accept their arrest. The clock ticks and Tora keeps on growing desperate as the countdown nears zero. He flies at full speed and makes it out of the building just as it goes kaboom. But Shio wakes up because of the rough landing and sees Naka on fire. He cries as he runs to save her, but Tora grabs him and tells him to wait. The Naka they were seeing was the clone Tora created using his hair, and she comes and assimilates into his body, while the real one was behind Ushio all this time. She is blushing after hearing how much Ushio cares for her, and even he turns red upon realizing that she heard it all. Ushio scolds her for making him worry, and they quarrel, but while blushing this time. Ball also wakes up, and Tora tells him that it is his fault that they had to go through so many troubles, but he is certain that even if no one had asked, Ushio would have saved him anyway. A few days later, life returns to normal for everyone. Naka and Ino pay a visit to Ushio, who is busy fighting with Tora and Naka stops their fight once again. She beats some sense into them, and Ushio's dad wishes that these kids can enjoy this peace for as long as possible. However, Hakuman does not have any plans to let that happen. Hakuman, whose sole purpose is to curse and kill everything, is also preparing for the final battle. The strongest demon cannot forget the day when the beast's spear first chased after her and made her feel terror from the first time. Hakuman curses the spear, calling it the most evil thing in the world, and disintegrates one of its tails into minute demons to stop the spear from reaching her again. Unaware of the demon's plans, Ushio spends his time trying to grow stronger. One day, he visits Naka's home to return her notebook. And though her parents tell him to eat some free ramen, he replies that he will come eat it the next time. On the other hand, Naka wants to learn embroidery to win his heart with some feminine charms. She asks Reiko to teach her embroidery since she wants to engrave Ushio's name on his bag so that he does not lose it again. Both of them are walking home through a road shrouded by cherry blossoms in full bloom when they run into each other. They are silent for a long while, but then start quarreling with each other over petty things. However, as they walk past each other, both of them feel guilty that they can never be honest about their feelings. Yushio realizes that he might die in the battle against Hakuman, and before that, he wants to be nice to Naka. He offers to walk her home, and seeing her smile sends even the Lord of Riz blushing. They playfully tease each other as they walk ahead, but then suddenly Naka's vision is blocked by the falling cherry blossom petals, and when it subsides, she has lost all her memories of Ushio. She asks him who he is, and Ushio laughs because he thinks she is just joking around. However, when she says that they have just met, and she doesn't like him, Ushio is aghast. He cannot accept this and rushes into Naka's house to talk to her, but you and her parents don't remember him and tell him that it is bad manners to walk into a stranger's house like this. 
Lucio is heartbroken, and as Naka tells him to get lost, he apologizes to her parents and starts heading back. They stop him and offer him some consolation Raymond because they believe their daughter has dumped the boy. Lucio cries while eating as Naka's parents talk about how the girl has had a crush on someone for the longest time, but they can't remember anything about him. Lucio decides to visit the temple where his father works because they might be able to help him. To be shocked, all the priests there, including his dad, have been turned to stone. Lucio falls to his knees in desperation, and he loses any hope of finding help. Later, he is whining about being alone on the stairs of the temple when Tora comes up to him, and he also looks quite distant and detached. Lucio fears that even his partner has forgotten about him, but Tora tells him to wipe off the pathetic expression from his face. Lucio is overjoyed to learn that he still remembers him, and he hugs Tora while crying. Soon, they fly towards Inno's house, and Ushio believes she might also have forgotten about him. However, Tora claims that he has sensed something special about the girl ever since he met her. She never appeared to be afraid of monsters as much as she should be, almost as if she were subconsciously confident about her inner power. Tora believes that Inno might not have forgotten about Ushio. He adds that all the people who have forgotten him smell hacumen, and they must reach to the core of the problem. On the other hand, the demons from all sides are combining their efforts to prepare for the final battle against Hakuman. The limp-nosed guy and a guy with limp ears are preparing an army of barrier using demons to protect Oshio from other monsters on Hakuman's side, and they have also prepared a full plate of samurai armor to assist him in the battle. They are waiting for Takasaka, who has promised them some news, but as he comes back from the future, he tells the demons that they can never win the war against Hakuman. The demons are stunned for a while, but then suddenly, they lose their memories of Ushio too and wonder why they created the armor. In Ino's house, her family has adopted Kirio as her younger brother at the request of Ushio's dad. Kirio feels he does not deserve such kindness, but Ino tells her to not think too much and eat his food before it gets cold. Ushio reaches Ino's house in the morning and Naka has come to visit her too. She thinks Ushio is a creepy stalker and tells him not to bother her friend and he nervously slaps her because he wants her to remember him. Lushio feels guilty about it, and Naka slaps him back before going inside. However, Lushio's beast spear starts ringing to indicate danger and Ino is kidnapped by barrier demons just as Naka enters the house. On the roof, Kirio is fighting with a fast and invisible enemy, and Bushio goes to help him first. Kirio has also forgotten about him, but Ushio does not mind him losing his memories. He is stunned to find that one of the doggy's siblings and the unicorn demon were attacking Kirio, and they do not recognize Ushio either. In the house, the limp-nosed demon and his friends have captured Ino and Naka, and they restrain Tora when he comes to rescue them. They claim to have never seen Tora before and then fly away after causing a giant explosion. Lushio doesn't understand why the demons are kidnapping his friends, but he joins Tora to chase after them to save the girls. After a few minutes of flying, they come to the western demon's sky fortress. Before they can even get close to it, the doggy siblings attack them and send them crashing to the ground. A few hours later, Wushio wakes up from a terrible nightmare where he sees the beast spear shattered. He wonders where they are when Saya greets him. She still remembers him and Ushio gets too emotional to learn this. Saya points to the roof, where a swarm of leech demons is trying to break her barrier to attack them. She explains that these leeches are part of Hakuman, and they have attacked all the people who knew Ushio and Tora and consumed their memories about the duo. However, her barrier is impenetrable, and that is why she still remembers them. Saya explains that Hakuman gains power from others' fear. The more humans and demons fear her, the stronger she gets. However, even Hakuman fears the beast spear, its user, and Tora, the king of demons. This trio has succeeded in bringing humans and demons together to form an alliance that gives them hope to defeat Hakuman. Since hope weakens fear, and thus makes Hakuman vulnerable, she used her powers to make everyone forget about them. Oshio finds all this hard to digest and asks Saya for her source. She says she heard it from a friendly demon, and then Takeseka makes his appearance. He states that he went as far into the past and future as he could to find any weakness of Hakuman. His body took great damage every time he failed, but then he finally reached the final battle, where he saw the beast spear getting destroyed. When Takeseka told the demon leaders about that, they felt overwhelming despair for a moment, but then declared their intention to create a second beast spear to defeat Hakuman. Takeseka realized that they had also lost their memories then, he has more shocking news for Ushio. It reminds him that the beast spear was created by Jimmy's sacrifice, and to create it once again, they need to follow the same process. Takasaka claims that Ino has Jimmy's blood, and that is why the demons plan to sacrifice her. Ushio is furious because he cannot let that happen, and he destroys all the leeches as he tells Tora to get ready to save the girls. 
On the other hand, Ino and Naka are in the Sky Fortress. A crow demon tells them that they should try to escape as the barrier surrounding them will turn humans into ash. Ino asks Naka if she also thinks that the man with the spear will come to save them, just like he did when they returned to stone. Naka remembers that incident but doesn't remember who saved them. Ino states that they both seem to have lost the memory of someone important whom they love, but he only loves Naka back. Naka says that this is too hard to believe, but Ino confesses that she wants her friend to be happy with the spearman. Despite that, she finds it hard to control her emotions sometimes and cries herself to sleep often. Naka is upset about hearing this and she claims that she does not want her friend to cry and wants to give the spearman to her so that she can be happy. Soon, the crow demon returns and tells Naka that she can go home but her friend is going to be sacrificed for the greater good. Naka attacks the crow, but he just slaps her away towards the barrier. The crow realizes his mistake, but then suddenly, Ino cries out for her friend and uses the power lying dormant within her to save her and destroy the barrier demon. Everyone is shocked by what she just did, and the limp duo come to the room upon sensing a strange spiritual power. Everyone wonders where Ino suddenly got her spiritual powers from, and then suddenly, Jimei appears before them. She asks the demons not to sacrifice the girl, but they are adamant that she is needed to create a second beast spear, and Ino is the best candidate since she has Jimei's blood in her. Ino is astonished, but Jimei tells her that she has a great role in her scheme of things. She tells Ino that she is going to be the next saintess, who will keep Hakuman sealed in the pillars after Ushio's mother can no longer do that. However, Ino and Naka don't know Ushio, and Jimei understands what has happened. She urges the demons to remember Ushio, who is the reason they have come together. The Limp Brothers are adamant about forging a new beast spear, and they command the barrier demons to trap Jimei and Ino. Naka tries to free Ino, but the barrier cooks her hands medium rare. She lashes out at the demons, saying that it is not fair to use and throw anyone as they please just because they want to defeat Hakuman. Those words remind her of Ushio, but she still can't remember him properly. Naka shakes those memories off and rushes to help Ino again, and the result is the same as the last time. The demons take Ino to be sacrificed and Jimei cannot do anything because she does not have much power as a ghost. Naka tries to find a way to save Ino, but then the Dobby sister starts applying Lu to her burnt arms and she realizes that the demons were also not happy about what they were doing. They were using Ino just because they were desperate to win the war. As Ino is released from her barrier, Naka tells the demons that she won't resist anymore, but they should allow her to say her final goodbye. Ino claims that she has accepted her fate and is not even afraid of dying right now, but Naka does not plan to let her die. She asks Jimai if the sacrifice is necessary to be her blood relative and learns that it is not necessary. Naka offers to make a deal with the demons. In exchange for saving Ino's life, she will jump into the furnace and Ino can help them later by sealing away Hakuman if needed. Ino cries, refusing to let her do that, but Naka insists that she wants to protect her best friend. Naka asks the demon leaders and Jimai for their opinion, and they agree to let her sacrifice herself. Naka walks to the furnace and Ino tries to stop her, but the Dadi sister holds her back, asking her to respect her friend's wishes. Naka climbs to the furnace, thinking about all the things she has yet to cross off her bucket list. She thinks about her family and friends and how she wants to get a boyfriend and go on a date with him. She thinks that her ideal guy would be a foul-mouthed, impatient, pure-hearted, emotional dude with thick, manly eyebrows and big, sparkly eyes. She suddenly recalls that this description fits the guy who stalked her all the way to her house and wonders if he is the one she has feelings for. In the meantime, Mushio and Tora have reached the fortress too, but it is surrounded by a large number of demons, and they defeat them all without killing them to move forward. They ultimately reach inside the fortress and knock down the demons. Tora threatens one of them to reveal the location of the girls, and they fly towards them. Mushio recalls how he could not save Juro, Jimei's mom, and Jimei in the past. This time, he is determined to not lose anyone ever again. Inside, Naka steadies her heart and dives into the pool of lava, thinking about Ushio, who breaks into the room just then. She catches fire as she falls, but Ushio rushes towards her at his top speed and places himself between Naka and the fire pit to save her. He screams at her to not die, and she looks at him one last time before losing consciousness. They are both burning, and Tora does not want to eat barbecue meat. He shoots thunder towards the fire pit, and the beast spear channels it to destroy the furnace. Bushio is still standing after saving Naka from the fire, but both of them look like my first attempt at making an omelette. The Limp Nose is furious that their plan was foiled, and he commands his demons to attack Bushio. Tora can stop some of them, but he finds that Bushio is silently taking the beating, while holding Naka. Tora asks him to fight back, but Bushio claims that these people must have forgotten about them, but he has not forgotten that they are his friends. 
His words weaken Tora too, who cannot fight back against the doggy brother and unicorn demon and gets thrashed by all the demons. Chi Mei asks the demons to stop because they are hurting a demon who has saved humans and a human who has shed tears for demons. The demons don't stop but Inub decides that she cannot let her friends be hurt anymore. She uses her power to cover them in a barrier and sends them out of the building where the doggy sister pours the healing balm on Oshio and Naka just before other demons try to attack them. However, before they can start fighting, the Sky Fortress is attacked by a group of monsters led by a Tora Ripoff, with Wolverine's blades growing through its mouth. The demon claims to be Hakuman's servant, who is here to destroy all those who oppose her. The two demon armies start fighting each other, and Tora takes this chance to get out of here. However, Woshio does not want to let his demon friends fight alone and asks Ino to head to safety with Naka. Tora lashes out at him, asking him why he wants to help those demons after they tried to kill him and sacrifice Naka. Bushio replies that he cannot abandon them because he still remembers their moments together. He cries for Naka, apologizing for getting her dragged into his problem. He promises to never forget her, even if she doesn't remember him, and then hands her over to Ino, and asks Tora to take him back. Tora is not going back and he just yeets Ushio to the fortress, where he faces the monsters. Tora takes the girls to the kappa, who puts medicine on Naka's wounds and then covers her with medicinal leaves. Ino asks Tora if he isn't going to help his friend and he acts like he doesn't care even if Ushio dies. However, he just slights himself into believing that he wants to save Ushio only because he is his meal and flies off. Meanwhile, Ushio is having a hard time fighting against the monsters as his legs are seriously injured. The monsters gang up on him, but Tora comes in clutch at the last moment and saves him. Ushio gets on his back and they fight together with perfect coordination. They keep on bantering as they destroy the monsters, and the demons realize that when Ushio and Tora fight together, it seems that both of them are just one entity. They use their lightning attack combo to destroy all the attackers, and the demons stare at them. Tora tells Ushio that even after they save the demons, they are not going to be on their side. Ushio does not mind, and he flies away with Tora to see the girls. Meanwhile, Saya and the Chinese goddess have also arrived to look after Naka, and Ji Mei tells Ino that it is time for her to fulfill her duty. Saya offers to volunteer to become the saintess and keep Hakuman sealed, but Ino refuses her kindness because she has always dreamt of saving the world as a superhero. She claims that Mushio and Naka were her role models, and while she cannot become brave like them, becoming a saintess is her chance to live out her fantasy. Ino flies away with Ji Mei, asking Saya to relay her final message to Ushio. She asks him to defeat Hakuman quickly, and then take her back to the real world. Soon, the sun rises again and Ushio hears everything from Saya and he promises to bring back Ino at all cost. Saya says that she believes she has a special role to play in the upcoming battle, and she will try her best to fulfill it. Ushio thanks her, and then flies off with Naka. Naka is admitted to a hospital, where she shows an incredibly fast recovery from her burns. Meanwhile, Ushio tells everything that happened to Kirio, who wants to save Ino, but Tora and Kuman stop him because there is nothing they can do. They tell them that Ino left to seal Hakuman on her own and she must do that job until they are ready to face the demon in the final battle. Kirio understands that and he leaves to research Hakuman and find ways to defeat her. Bushio returns to his house, where he was waiting for him. Thanks to his magic eye, he was able to see through Hakuman's trick and remember Ushio, who was quite happy to see someone else who remembers him. Just then, his spear starts ringing and suddenly a group of monsters that look like Tora's illegitimate children appear in front of them. Tora declares that none of them are his because he always uses protection and rushes to finish them off. You stop him, claiming that the beast spear has stopped responding to them because they do not seem to carry any evil intent. He has a theory that these monsters were summoned by the spear itself. He knows them as Azafus, monsters whose real names and nicknames are not known to anyone. Hugh claims that the Azafus are shrouded in mystery and he suspects that Tor is one of them. Ushio is confused on hearing all this and Hugh explains that he took Tokisaka's help and went to the past and saw the monster who killed his wife and daughter, where he learned a secret. Before Ushio can ask what the secret is, something suddenly comes crashing towards them. It is the same ripoff of Tora that attacked the demons last time and one of the Azafus tries to attack him. However, the ripoff is quite strong and kills it instantly, enraging Tora. He demands the ripoff to tell him what is going on, but he just laughs because he can't be bothered. Hugh interrupts their conversation and calls the ripoff Sokui, reminding him that this was his true name. He begins a story that takes place 1700 years in the past, when an inhuman bandit who lived only to kill and loot became the most wanted man in his country. The man ran from the soldiers and arrived at the mountains, where he found the beast's spear. Just as he picked up the spear, a monster attacked him. The spear gave the bandit its power, and he was able to defeat the monster. 
The bandit saw a chance to grab the bag and started working as a demon hunter, defeating demons for money. However, the man lost his soul to the beast's spear, just like Ushio was about to lose his soul in the past. The bandit turned black like his heart and corrupted by the beast's spear. He turned into the monster who stands in front of them now. Yu claims that the monster was once the bandit named Sokui, and every other Azafuse was also someone who failed to master the beast's spear. Toru doesn't care about the backstory and starts fighting with Sokui, and they are both equally matched. Ushio realizes that if all the Azafuse were once humans who used the beast spear, Toru was also a human too. Toru refuses to believe that he was a human once and shoots Sokue with a thunderbolt, but it has no effect on him because their power source is the same. Tor asks him why he is trying to kill other Azafuse, and Sokue replies that the avatar of Hakuman asked him to do that. Sokue explains that he does not have any memories of his time as a human, but he has the memories from the time when he was turned into stone like the other Azafuse. The Azafuse verify this fact and claim that when they were turned to stone, they constantly had one thought fed to them. A voice told them to hate Hakuman and kill her. Lucio wonders if it is the same for Tora too, but the Azafuse believe that he is different because he has a personal grudge against Hakuman. Tora first wants to know what Sokue remembers, and he reveals how one of Hakuman's avatars visited him when he was stone. She offered to let him kill something stronger than all the other things he had killed before. She knew that Sokue was not brainwashed by the beast's spear into becoming Hakuman's enemy, because his heart was also as dark as a demon. The avatar told Sokue that the Azafuse would be freed from their petrification when the time for the final battle came. They will head to the beast's spear and try to kill Hakuman, but the avatar wanted to hire Sokui to kill the Azafuse before that. He accepted the deal, and she gave him the power to kill him. Tora says that he wasted his time listening to his trash story and Sokui rushes at him with the wolverine blades on its face. He breaks through his hair defense and kicks him to the ground, but then notices Hugh smiling menacingly at him. Hugh declare that he is so happy to see the monster he wants revenge on that he can't control himself from smiling. When he went back in time, he saw Sokui eating his wife and daughter, and then scaring his face. He realized that Sokui left him alive on purpose to let him feel the pain of losing his family. Tor wants a rematch with Sokui, but Oshio stops him, telling him that this fight is Hugh's now. Hugh attacks Sokui, who catches all this Kumai and then attacks him with his thunderbolt. Hugh survives that attack and rushes at Sokui, injuring his eye. Sokui is furious and shoots a thunderbolt at Hugh, who blocks it using his talismans, but the talismans break and give the monster a chance to attack him again. However, he binds him with his strong steel threads and declares that this is the end of the battle. He uses his strongest move, but all it does is give Sokue pimples over its body. He claims it is not strong enough to defeat him and slashes Hugh before picking him up and expressing his desire to taste Hugh's magic eye. Hugh shocks the monster by stabbing him in the gut, claiming that he will not lose his eyes until he sees Sokue die at his hands. Sokue decides to finish him, but then he feels that Hakuman is getting ready for battle and decides to spare Hugh for today. He kicks him away but lets the kunai stay embedded in his body so that it reminds him of his mistake. Sokue takes to the sky where the monsters under his command are already present. He flies away with them, telling Ushio that there is no way he can defeat Hakuman. Ushio comforts Hugh, but then they notice that the Azafuse have climbed on top of each other and are turning to stone. Ushio asks them to stop as he has many questions, but the Azafuse tell him that they will meet again in the near future when the final battle starts. Later. Woshio patches up Hugh and gives him some alcohol after stealing it from his dad's stash. Hugh offers some to Ushio, who refuses because he cannot drink legally, but Tora taunts him to man up and take it. They begin fighting again, and Hugh is amused that they have not changed at all. He then declares that he will head out to track Sokui and get revenge on him, no matter the cost. However, Woshio does not want him to sacrifice his life in the battle because he wants his help in the final battle against Hakuman. Hugh leaves and Woshio and Tora start preparing for the final battle.